Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Countdown to Showdown, the greatest ladies professional wrestling event in all of history with the LPWA. I'm Mick Karsh along with Jim Cornette. Some tremendous ladies wrestling action, an international in scope ladies wrestling promotion. Jimmy, what a great afternoon ahead. Don't call me Jimmy, we're not that close, but I'll tell you, you are telling the truth. It is without doubt the greatest women's wrestling extravaganza of all time. The LPWA Super Ladies Showdown, it's gonna happen today in just a few minutes, and you still have time to call your local cable company and order the Super Ladies Showdown. In today's program, you and I, Mick, we're gonna be taking a look at a lot of the action that the girls are involved in. We're gonna be giving an overview of the matches. You're gonna be seeing a lot of different uh, pieces of footage on just exactly why these matches came together and came to be this way on the Super Ladies Showdown today. Like I said, you still got time to call your cable company in order but this show that we're doing right here, Mick, is going to be an extravaganza unto itself. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you, contact your cable system. You don't want to miss this. You talk about the greatest lady professional wrestlers in the world, and literally they're coming from all over the world, from the United States, Japan, Canada, Denmark, all the top Cambodia. Cambodia, all <laughs> over the world. So let's go ahead and take a look at the matches, Mick. Fantastic, and again, international in scope. One team for the opening bout, Desiree Peterson out of Denmark, KC Houston from Canada, and right here from the United States, Luscious Lisa Starr. Oh, but I tell you what, Mick, the team that they're facing, all Japanese team, Mickey Honda, tremendous competitor we've heard so much about. Mommy Kitamura, boy, come to Mommy here because she is a tough one, and Kandori. Kandori rounds out the Japanese team in that opening six-woman tag challenge. And then the challenge match between Allison Royal and the Magnificent Mimi. Well, the Magnificent Mimi, a tremendous reputation, but I've got to tell you, Allison Royal, a great exponent of scientific wrestling skills, she's geared up and ready for Mimi. Let me tell you something, Allison Royal has about as much chance of winning this match as it does of being 90 degrees in Minneapolis in the wintertime. I know Magnificent Mimi is going to take it. Then we have, without doubt, the most exciting tournament that has ever taken place in LPWA history, in the history of women's wrestling. It's for the newly created LPWA Japanese Women's Championship. This tournament is going to be a round-robin tournament featuring eight girls, three from the United States, and five of the top Japanese girls in professional wrestling. And it's like I said, it's a round robin tournament. The winner will have to wrestle three times and win three times in the same afternoon in order to win that title, the LPWA Japanese title. And you're gonna see a lot of tremendous action involved in this as those girls scuffle and, and go after that championship. Well, no doubt about it. And as you mentioned, Jim, having to win three times in order to capture the championship, a very, very tough road to hold, but some outstanding competitors, a mixture of veterans and those who have not been in the sport quite as long. Let's take a look at some of those wrestlers involved in that tournament. The first entrant in the tournament for the LPWA Japanese title, of course, the, the dynamic Texan, Susan Green. She's big, six feet tall. She's, she's a tremendous brawler as well as a wrestler. Let's take a look at Susan Green in action right now. Trouble right now, she's got that leg tied up. Boy, I tell you what, Lady X is writhing in pain. Slamming that fist into the back of the head, back of the neck, shoulder blades. Now, Lady X hops out, oh. unable to stand up well, but they're trading toe to toe, boy. Woo! Oh, I heard that one smack, Joe. All right, Lady X goes in with a shoulder into the the uh, stomach area there, taking the wind out of Susan Green. A great match so far by Susan Green. And no matter what happens in this match, I think you have to agree, Susan Green is proving that she can stand toe to toe with Lady X. I'll tell you what, these two, they, they, it's like they're fighting for the world title. Susan Green must think the title's on the line because I've never seen anybody go all out like this to fight this hard without a title on the line. She yep. has given Lady X everything she can take and then so. Both of these ladies are outside the ring right now. The referee is counting. One of these ladies better get back up in the ring. The referee Whoa! is counting. The old Mo Howard right in the eyes and slams her head into the rail. All right, the referee is counting the count, and Susan Green now tossed into that railing. The referee counting. Lady X. Whoa, wait a minute. Lady X Lady knocked X. her back off the apron. Lady now the referee is saying ring the bell. And another combatant, ladies and gentlemen, from right here in the state of Minnesota, 
as tough as nails, and what an attitude to go along with her prowess. Dangerous Denise Storm. Let's look at Denise. Denise Storm, a member, of course, of Jonathan Blue's Blues Band. And Blue, of course, from what we understand, is out of the country. He's going all across the, the world on a, on a big talent search. Well, I tell you, anything I can do to help keep Jonathan Blue away from the LPWA, I'm all for. We gave him a list of about 40 countries where we understood there were some top women's wrestlers. Maybe he'll visit all 40 if we're lucky. Yeah, Maybe we'll see him back here in about a year. Yeah, I figured you'd have some kind of sentiment like that, but you're going to change your tune, Petticino, when Jonathan Blue comes back to the United States with one of the greatest wrestlers that we've ever seen. Wait a minute, Alvarez. Almost a three count and dangerous Denise Storm. I don't think it may just be me, but I don't, well. I was going to say, I don't think she's looking quite as dangerous without Jonathan Blue, but... Well, it may be you, but that may not have anything to do with Jermaine at this point. The point is that Dangerous Denise Storm is dangerous by herself, singly, together as a couple, member of a group, duo, whatever. Uh, look, look at this arrogance on the part now of Storm. I'm not sure I'd be oh. so arrogant this soon, although that was a beautiful snap suplex, as Gordon would say, suplex to the rest of us. Picks her right up, too. Denise Storm, a member of the Blues Band, along with Magnificent Mimi. Jonathan Blue brings back another top lady wrestler to join the Blues Band. They are going to be, without a doubt, one of the most fearsome combinations in professional wrestling. And right now, Dangerous Denise Storm doing everything she can to put some fear in Alma Alvarez. Picks her up under the arm, a beautiful side slam, drove her down, pointed the spine of the bat. The referee counts one, two, and three. That's it. Three counts. She got it. And, of course, then you have none other than Reggie Bennett. Reggie Bennett's made a lot of noise about how she wants a title in the LPWA. This could be her day. If she has anything to say about it, it will. Let's go to see Reggie Bennett in action right now. After that match we saw a few weeks ago with Mimi and Denise yeah. taking on Power and Bennett. I had Power and Bennett on the slugger last week. Hated every minute of it. And they not only knocked Mimi, but they knocked Denise pretty strong as well. And they said any time that the Blues Band wants some more of Power and Bennett come on, but Bennett had this prior commitment. All I got to say is I wouldn't yeah. make I wouldn't make enemies out of dangerous Denise Storm and Magnificent Mimi. No, uh, no way, brother. Well, you never know what those two are going to be up to. And I understand I got some bad news this week. What's that? I understand Jonathan Blue is due back any day in the United States. As a matter of fact, he'll probably be back in time for next week's program. I, you know, I've kept in touch with Jonathan. As a matter of fact, I did an interview with him not long ago for the Louisville Slugger on the LPWA Superline. If you're not too busy hearing Bennett and Bambi and Malaya and Powell and all those other no accounts, call 1-900-456-LPWA. Listen to the Louisville Slugger. You don't have to listen to all those other girls. You can listen to me. Big power slam. Count of three. Yeah, she got it. She's got the first fall. And then, ladies and gentlemen, Yukari Osawa one of the great technicians in Japanese lady wrestling. She's coming to the United States with that one goal in mind, to win the LPWA Japanese tournament. Let's go to the clip right now. And then, of course, none other than Harley Saito. We have heard all about 
Miss Saito, her high flying techniques. This girl flips and flies like you've never seen before, and she's going to have to do just that to win the LPWA Japanese title. Now let's take a look at Harley Saito in action. Ladies and gentlemen, Mizuki Endo. You talk about the work ethic of the Japanese lady wrestlers. She applies it 150% whenever she gets into the ring. Determination straight ahead all the way. Let's go take a look. Another Japanese girl entering, Eagle Sawai. And believe me, this eagle is going to land because we've heard all about her. The Japanese have a tremendous, tremendous knowledge of technical wrestling, but they're also high flyers. And this Eagle Sawai is one of the highest flyers of all. We caught her in an exclusive workout session. Let's take a look at that right now. And ladies and gentlemen, rounding out the tournament, Midori Saito. We also have workout footage of Midori. You talk about somebody who's dedicated to this sport with her sights on becoming the greatest lady wrestler in the sport today. Let's go to the clip. <laughs> Yeah. 
The LPWA, I mentioned at the top hey. of this program, far and away the trendsetter, the leader in ladies' professional wrestling. This tournament, very, very innovative. You still have time. Contact your local cable company. Pick up the phone. Right now, ladies and gentlemen. It's America. There's phones all over the place. Well, that was very, very astute. I urge you, as does my friend here, Jimmy Cornett, please, ladies and gentlemen, these are the greatest lady wrestlers in the sport today. Contact that cable company. Get on the horn right now in just a few short minutes. The LPWA coming right into your homes with the greatest ladies wrestling action in the world. You know that tournament has got me all fired up, but that's just a portion of the action you're going to see. That's just a small smidgen, just a sampling of the tremendous action that you're going to see involving the greatest lady wrestlers in the world. And I'll tell you something right now. I can hardly wait to get to ringside with my colleague Joe Petticino, especially and get away from you, Mick Karch, and talk about this tremendous action and also talk about the remainder of the matches you're going to see on the Super Ladies Showdown, such as a grudge match between Rock and Robin and Black Venus with her manager, Boogaloo Brown. Now, I was there, Mick Karch, when Rock and Robin and Black Venus met for the very first time. It was a brawl. Chairs, chains, bottles, rocks, bricks, sticks, pots, pans, and tin cans. Anything went. It was all legal. It was all happening. And today's a grudge match. And I know Boogaloo Brown, my managerial colleague, is going to have a few things in store for Rock and Robin. You know about Rock and Robin. I know about Rock and Robin, a tremendous, tremendous champion of the World Wrestling Federation. She's not going to be taking this one lightly. What a match, ladies and gentlemen. Rock and hey, Robin. Hey, hey, I know Black Venus. What a tremendous physique. The best physique on any woman in wrestling. That's Black Venus with her manager, Boogaloo Brown. Let's take a look at these action highlights. As you can see, Royal is in bad shape. Every time the referee tries to give her a chance to get back in the ring, Venus comes over. And now Venus just drags her back in the ring, takes her, throws her against the ropes, comes off Whoa! the forearm right across the throat area, the upper chest. Venus goes down. There's one, two, and Allison Royal kicks out. Dr. Dedner tracks with that clothesline. Allison Royal, I think... Uh, Discretion is the better part of valor, but in this case, lay down is the better part of staying healthy. If she had just not bothered to kick, she'd have been a lot better off. Well, she's taking a lot more of a beating. You know, this is unusual for us to see Allison Royal getting uh, handled this easily, but I'm going to tell you, I have never seen Black Venus like this before. Wow, she had got her fingers in the eyes, spreading the lips out, stuck a finger up the nostril. I think this is getting gross. We better put a parental discretion advised on this match. Well, now she's just tossing Allison Royal around. Right now, Rock and Robin opening up against Leilani Kai. Takes her over with a big arm drag. Leilani Kai and Judy Martin, the Glamour Girls, are going to make a point of showing Rock and Robin and Wendy Richter that just because they happen to be the two biggest single stars in the history of women's wrestling, well, that doesn't make them a tag team, brother. Well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You've got Wendy Richter and Rockin' Robin, both former WWF Ladies Champions. You've got the Glamour Girls, former WWF Ladies Tag Team Champions, and of course, currently the World Tag Team Champions, as recognized by the LPWA. I agree. She's done well. Now, there's a reversal. Lilani goes in, comes up. We've got a monkey flip coming. Oh, wow. She goes all the way into the other turnbuckle. 
And also, ladies and gentlemen, on this tremendous extravaganza, a tag team battle for the LPWA Tag Team Championship, Malaya Hosaka and Bambi teaming up against the Glamour Girls. Oh, boy, I tell you what, you know, you just mentioned the word tag team. It sends chills and shivers up and down my spine because I'm a tag team specialist, always have been, and I know a couple of good tag teams when I see them. The Glamour Girls are, without a doubt, the greatest women's tag team in the history of ladies professional wrestling. They have been everywhere. They've done it all. They've been the WWF tag team champions. They have been tag team champions in Japan and New Zealand across the globe. I tell you what, only on the LPWA Super Ladies Showdown could you see a match of this magnitude. Call your local cable company. Get on the telephone. Put a dime in it. Call somebody. Tell them you want to order the LPWA Super Ladies Showdown. Boys and girls, I cannot tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, the entertainment value that you are getting today is second to none, is on a par with the very finest in sports entertainment and something that I think that you should take advantage of, make available to yourself. You owe it to yourself. You should be ashamed if you miss it. Now let's talk about this tag team title match. Bambi, that sweet little Georgia girl, right? Bambi. What a tremendous competitor. And Malaya Hosaka, her regular tag team partner, known to all the millions of LPWA fans. But what about the Glamour Girls? Talk about my favorite team. Well, I know they're your favorite team, but what I want to talk about with the Glamour Girls is that character that accompanies them to ringside Queen Love, which I understand yeah. is another very close friend of yours. He's a close personal friend. Mm -hmm. The Queen Christopher Love has been behind me all the way in my march to make the LPWA a better place. Let's take a look at some action footage right now of Bambi and Malaya Hosak. Oh, look at that. What a great... Whoa! But Malaya said, all right, if you want it, here it comes. I'll tell you what, these girls together, they got more moves than a daggum pestle of cats and a burlap sack. There's Whoa! That spin kick right to the throat and the face of Mimi. And Malaya Osaka has got Mimi reeling now. Takes her, throws her into the corner, comes in. There is that moonsault with the elbow. If I had to see her grin one more time, I believe I'd throw up. Well, let me tell you, if she keeps this up, you're going to see her grinning big coming up. In Holy mackerel, look at this! Beautiful move on the part of Bambi. She has got Lady X rocking it. Really, she's going for it again. Goes and she held the ropes as she went. Bambi fell back on her head. Bambi able to pick up a beautiful now. standing monkey flip from Bambi. Who tried another one in the corner, and Lady X, like you said, was able to hold on to the ropes enough to cause Bambi to go back on her head. But now a jackknife from Bambi. And ladies and gentlemen, the Glamour Girls, the tag team champions, as Jim Cornette alluded to earlier on, one of the toughest tag teams in the history yeah. of this sport. Let's take a look at the Glamour Girls. Big handled by the queen in his court. That's right, he's letting to get germs all over himself. Yeah, you don't talk to me that way, Drew. It would be disgusting for you to handle all those right. after they've been around. Look here, at Misty Blue. Here Misty comes, Blue. Here comes yeah, this move that they've used so many times. Oh, they drop her right down across the knee of Melody Kai. Folks, that's usually it. Hold on, that's it. She kicks out. Hey, Heidi Lambert gets kicked out. You want the queen to touch belts that Misty Blue has worn? She's been in more laps than a napkin. They've got to be fumigated before the and ladies and gentlemen, the final match on the program today, the final match of the showdown will be the showdown for the LPWA World Women's title. The champion, Lady X, putting the title on the line against the number one challenger, the Tower of Power, Terry Power. Now, Power has said many times she wants a title match. She wants to prove that she is the best in the LPWA. She has never before had the opportunity to face Lady X in a title match situation. She has that today, and Mick, I know she is going to have to make the most of it, and that's what makes this showdown such a tremendous event, possibly the most important match ever to take place in the LPWA. Lady X, Terry Power, your thoughts, if you will. The very, very mysterious Lady X putting that championship on the line. Terry Power, one of the most magnificent physical specimens in the entire world of professional wrestling. Terry is gunning for Lady X. Let's take a look right now at Terry Power in action. Don't want you crying on me over here. Power's thrown into the corner. Uh oh, Whoa. this is gonna hurt. Oh, it sure did, but the wrong person. Terry Power moved out of the way, and a super clothesline takes Diane Van Hoffman down. Boy, if she'd have connected with that truckload of beef, that would have been it. And right, oh, she's got her! A body slam on the 
this huge woman by Terry Power, and now what? Surely she's not going to try oh. and suplex her. Oh, this will strain her milk right off the bat. Oh, gee, that cool was slugger for anything you. in the world. I hear you. I really mean it. Yeah. Whoa! Took her out of her boots, throws on her right across the face, Joe. Unbelievable. Denise Storm, I think, is hurt. That clothesline right to the face of Denise Storm, right to the mouth. And Denise Storm, I think, is going to regret attacking Terry Power from behind for a long, long time. Thomas goes for the eyes, though, and that'll slow you down no matter how strong you are. But now, speaking of strength, look at this. Terry Power has just picked her up and set Rusty Thomas up on that top turnbuckle. Gives her a big whack on the side of the head. And now, where's she going? Is she going to suplex her off that top row? Good night! Look at that! Oh! That's got to be a good night. The party is over. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Terry Power's looking good, but we owe it to ourselves to take a look at Lady Exit action just like you owe it to yourselves to get on the telephone just scant minutes from now. The show will start. You don't want to be left out in the cold because this is the greatest women's pay-per-view wrestling event of all time. If you miss it, be ashamed of yourself. And now, before I go to ringside and Joe Petticino, let's take one last final look at the action, and that being the world champion, Lady X, putting the title on the line against Terry Power today in the main event. Let's look at Lady X in action. All right, fans, we are back for the third fall. This is the one that will decide it all. It has come down to one fall as Lady X takes on superstar Susan Stexon, and she has gone right after her. Referee out of position there. But now she gives up a, a boomer, a slow boomer. She held on, look, and rolled up into a Boston Crab. I've Beautiful never seen that move. before. Down now to one fall. And she has got to be careful at this point. One slip up, and she could lose that title. Something she has held down for over a year. She has been one of the greatest champions in ladies wrestling history. And she could lose it if something goes wrong here. But right now, she's got Lady X now. Let's remind you, Lady X could lose also her opportunity. And I don't know how Ashley Kennedy would take it. Whatever she had to do to get a title match for Lady X after only two weeks as her owner. And oh, here! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Beautiful Sexton. move! Look at this! Wrapped up tight, but Lady X brother roll out. Susan said she carried it just a hair too far. She had her over just a little bit too much, and Lady X was able to use the leverage to come out. Susan Sexton, Sexton has put every kind of thing in the world. Lady X is just in betwixt and between a rock and a hard place. Sexton has had her in every kind of pity combination. But finally, Lady X able to come out and mount some kind of offensive. And now Lady X once again with things going her way. It's one and one. The winner She's of this ball will one. be the LPWA champion. And, and Ashley Kennedy's holding her feet down. Ashley Kennedy held her feet Was down. That Ladies and gentlemen, there you have a look, a complete rundown of the tremendous ladies wrestling action that's coming up in just a few moments on your local cable system. I urge you, pick up the phone and call. Ladies professional wrestling has never looked better than it does in the LPWA. International in scope, you have championship matches, tournaments abound. Every great ladies professional wrestler in the sport today is a part of this event. Once again, here is your opportunity. Just a few moments away, contact your local cable system, get on the horn right now and tell them you want the Ladies Professional Wrestling Association. It is coming to you on pay-per-view. This is history in the making. As Jim Cornette said a little bit earlier on, there is no doubt about it. This is history. The Ladies Professional Wrestling Association coming right into your homes with outstanding wrestling action grudge matches, tag team matches, you name it. If you are a fan of the lady wrestlers or professional wrestling in general, you owe it to yourself. Get on the horn right now. Jim Cornette has headed to ringside to join Joe Petticino for the call of the action. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Countdown to Showdown. Now let's do it to it. We're going to head to the ring. The great action with the Ladies Professional Wrestling Association, the Super Ladies Showdown. Stay with us, everybody. The greatest ladies wrestling event in history coming up.
welcome live to the Mayo Civic Center in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm Joe Pettacino, and already, Jim Cornette, you've got this crowd in a frenzy for oh. the Super Ladies Showdown. We are going to have the greatest event in the history of ladies professional wrestling right here today. That's right. Three titles are going to be decided. The LPWA World Singles title, the LPWA World Tag title, and also a tournament on today's program, a round-robin tournament. Three Americans, five Japanese for the LPWA Japanese Championship. One lucky winner is going to have to wrestle and win three times today. All right, that's coming up. And, of course, our big main event, Terry Powers finally gets her opportunity against Lady X, and she says that that Ladies World title is going home with her today. No chance, brother, because I know Lady X, and she's ready for this like she's never been before. She's going to retain the championship. We've also got the tag team titles on the line, Bambi and Malaya Hosaka against the Glamour Girls. We've also got that big tournament you're talking about, plus a couple of special grudge matches. Where did you get the coat, Jim? Hey, I got this from my good friend Doug Cooper. He's got a whole closet full of these things. Hey, shut up! What's the matter with you? They wouldn't know fashion if it jumped up and slapped them. All right, right now it's time to go to Mick Karsh. He is standing by. He's got some information for us, and we'll be back in just a second. What a great, great event we're going to have. But right now let's go to Mick Karsh. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. We are in the tunnel, and I've got to tell you the intensity is at a fever pitch. These ladies are geared up. They recognize the importance of this event this afternoon. It promises to be absolutely tremendous. We'll be getting comments from the ladies as they make their way to the ring. Let's go back to Joe Pettacino and Jim Cornette. All right, Mick Karsh will be standing by there in the tunnel where he will be interviewing some of the participants of today's card as they are just about to come out to the ring. We will be getting their thoughts just as they're coming to the ring. Bonnie Blackstone is standing by. She is in the hospitality suite where she will be giving us... <laughs> I can imagine how hospitable she's being back there in the hospitality suite knowing Bonnie. All right, she is going to be interviewing up close and personal some of the wrestlers on today's card. Bonnie? Joe and Jim, I hope all of our viewers are enjoying this great Super Lady Showdown. As you can see, I'm here in the hospitality suite, and this is a very special area just outside of the arena. We have this set up here to get some of the up-close and personal feelings about some of our Super Ladies here with the LPWA and their matchups on this great pay-per-view exclusive. I'll be talking to such stars as Olympic trainer Brad Rangans, Terry Power, Reggie Bennett, and Denise Storm. All that and a whole lot more. Let's return now, though, to Joe Pettacino and Jim Cornette. Thank you very much, Bonnie. And standing by right here, almost at ringside, a very special situation. We've got Nick Bockwinkle and Sue Henning. They will have special analysis of today's event. As a matter of fact, I wish Nick Bockwinkle was standing here because if it's one guy that I've got respect for, it's the former heavyweight champion of the world, Nick Bockwinkle. Maybe you could go up there and we'll trade. All right, let's go to Nick right now. So, go ahead. Um, all right, go ahead. We, we're looking at uh, Royal and Star in this match, in this first match against Honda and Kitamori. And one of the things that we're seeing, we were discussing it just before, and Sue asked me what I thought about the experience uh, and the weight. There's a little bit of a weight difference, but I don't think it's significant enough. One of the things I do notice, combined, there are six years of experience with the American girls. There's nine years of experience with the Japanese girls. And that is a tremendous difference. And, I, and, I, and it's, to a certain extent, I think that is what's going to give the Japanese girls the edge. We'll just have to wait and see what happens now. Let's go over to Joe and Jim. All right, thank you very much. And as we <laughs> said, we've got a lot going on today, and that was uh, some comments on our first match that's coming up. But before... This is the mo moment that I've been waiting for. I always love to hear from Commissioner Wally Carbo, and brother, we're fixing to right now. Let's go to Wally Carbo <laughs> with some comments. This is going to be great. You are about to see the greatest lady wrestlers in action. Never in the history of wrestling, such a array of great lady wrestlers from all over the world will be comp competing. The greatest in the United States and Japan, the Japanese lady wrestlers will be competing for three different titles. The best of the greatest lady wrestlers will be in action. All right, we are back at uh, ringside. We are live. Al Darusha also has some comments that he is going to be making, and well, I wait, understand. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've seen Al Darusha. Isn't he the guy that looks like he's wearing a coonskin cap on the top of his head? He looks like another old friend of both of ours. Well, we're going to take a, a listen right now. I understand that Al Darusha has some comments to make, and we've also got a parade of wrestlers coming up. Wait a minute, is that kind of like the Macy's or the Gimbal's Parade on Thanksgiving? Hey, I bet you're one of the floats, aren't you, Joe? Come on, admit Let, it. Let's oh, just go no, to Al Darusha. He's 
We want to welcome everyone to this worldwide pay-for-view event here on the LPWA, the Ladies Professional Wrestling Association, for today's Super Ladies Showdown. A fantastic afternoon of top professional wrestling action. The LPWA brings together the top lady wrestlers from throughout the world. Stay with us. It's going to be just fantastic. All right, that, that's our ring announcer, Al Darusha, and from what I understand, they are getting ready for the parade of wrestlers. You we know are looking something about Al Darusha? When he was in school, they didn't have history. Do you know how old he is? His social security number is one. Al Darusha, our ring announcer. All right. Well, I, okay, I am being told. You know, this guy's getting on me here. All right, I am being told to uh, introduce the parade. I understand the parade is ready, so let's go to the parade of wrestlers on today's program. gentlemen you probably will never again in your life see so many beautiful professional lady wrestlers from throughout the world gathered at any one time what do you think so far fantastic just great and before we get underway we would ask that if you would please stand and sing along with our national anthem thank you Well, let me tell you, I'll tell you something right now. I agree with Al Darusha. That is one of the uh, most awesome sights. All of these lady wrestlers, they're all prepared for today. They are ready to come out here and provide the finest in ladies professional wrestling in history. Yeah, but I'll tell you something right now. Take a look at the expensive fur coats on the Glamour Girls. I've seen some of these people in the crowd here in Rochester. If I was them, I wouldn't turn my back on those coats. They may be gone. Look at some <laughs> of these perpetual thieves around here. Well, I tell you what, I think you had better be very careful. I mean, you've got your expensive tennis racket here. And Somebody I'm not going to let it leave table. my side. 
All right, Nick Bockwinkel, Sue Henning are standing by. They will be, uh, during the day, as we said, we will be taking some special uh, looks at some of the matches coming up, and it's time now to get ready for our first match. So let's go to Nick Bockwinkel and Sue Henning and take a look at what Nick thinks is going to happen. Nick, our first match here, we've got Royal and Star taking on Honda and Kitamura. Now, Royal and Star have about a little bit more of a weight advantage. What do you think about that? Well, the weight advantage, as far as I'm concerned, is not uh, big enough to really make a difference. What I'm looking at is, again, there's nine years of experience on the two, on the Japanese team. There's six years of experience on the American team. And with young athletes, that three years is a big bunch. So I, right now, I have to give my nod to the Japanese team. I okay. might have to eat my words, but let's go back to Jim and Joe. And let's see how it turns out. All right, we are ready to go to the ring now. As a matter of fact, Al Darusha entering the ring. <laughs> as he he better watch out. I'm afraid his pacemaker is going to have garage doors doing flip-flops. in his. <laughs> <laughs> well, as Al. All right, as uh, Al is ready, it's time now for the entrances of our first match of the day. This afternoon will feature LPWA Tank Team Action. Two of our bevy of beauties, if you will, entering the ring at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Valdesta, Georgia, weighing in at 135 pounds, she is Allison Royal. And her tag team partner from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 160 pounds, she is Lisa Starr. Wrestling fans from Tokyo, Japan, I would like to introduce Miki Honda and her tag team partner, Mami Kitamori. LPWA tag team action and now down to ringside. All right. This should be quite an exciting match, Jim Cornette. We have got, of course, the team of Royal and Star, and uh, they have teamed up several times in the LPWA, and I understand they've been working out together. However, let's be honest, this team of Kitamori and Honda from Japan are a very experienced team. Well, I tell you something, Joe, you got to, uh, you got to admire the fact that Allison Royal seems to have been working out quite a bit. She is looking more voluptuous than we have seen her in the past, but Lisa Starr, always a favorite of mine, and she is taking it to Mickey Honda right now. All right, Honda is down, and uh, you know, this has to be quite an experience for these Japanese ladies as they have uh, come here to the United States, and what do they run into their first time? A huge ice and snow storm here in the Midwest. Uh, and Jim, I have seen more snow and ice out on the ground in the past two days than I've ever seen in my life. Well, I don't like snow because I'm a southern boy, and I didn't appreciate having to come up here to the Arctic wilderness, but at least these girls are heating things up in the ring right now, and Lisa Starr, luscious Lisa herself, has Mickey Hunter. Wait a minute, misses that clothesline. Close body, Joe. She comes off with a, cry, a flying crossbody, and there's a uh, clothesline, and now Mickey Honda going up on the second rope. Where is she going? She's up. She's got a kick right off that second rope. Big drop kick, and Lisa Starr, discretion, the better part of Valor, tags out to Allison Royal, and Allison Royal throwing him to the bread basket, trying to get the advantage back to the American team. There's a clothesline. Honda down, referee down one. We only get a one count as Kitamori came in. All right, Honda now taking over on Allison Royal, those big forearms to the back, and then she just smashed her head right down into the, uh, the ring. There's a oh, double drop kick. Shades of the Rock and Roll Express. Brother, a big double. 
double drop kick from the Japanese team. And now, Mickey Honda with a big vertical suplex. Allison Royal has got to be confounded at trying to combat the Japanese style, which is very unorthodox compared to the American way of wrestling. Well, and there's, there's some, Mommy, come to Mommy, and yeah. boy, she came to Allison. There's some of that teamwork we were talking about, too. As you saw, they are working together as a well-oiled team. And now, Kitamori has got uh, Allison Royal, throws her into the ropes. Where's she gonna go? Comes off. Sunset flip, she's got her down. Only a one count. Only a one count. Allison Royal, a good move though, as she flips over Kitamori. And Kitamori now hurting. Well, Allison Royal, she's got some spunk and some fight in her today. The Japanese girl tried to switch, couldn't hang on. Allison Royal grabbing the shoulder in the bread basket. Gonna have a monkey flip. And there you have it. Kitamori now with a. Got to have a backache after that one. Now she goes back into the corner. Here they go again. This time she does reverse it. Throws her in. Comes in. Drop kicks her right into the corner. Shades of the lightning kid. Now we know where that move came from. I tell you what, Allison Royal had nowhere to go. Just like a trash line after her. That's a western move there. Maybe she's from Dallas, Japan. Well. Mommy Kitamori. Now signals her partner, uh, Mickey Honda, off the top rope. seeing some teamwork for the team of Royal and Star. Big double suplex. Here comes, here comes Mickey Honda back with a drop kick on Lisa Star. Allison Royal going to the top rope. But wait a minute. She's Where? gotten caught up there. She She's has gotten out of power slam off the ropes. Off the top rope. One, two, three. She's got her. And the first match goes to the Japanese team of Kitamori and Hyundai. What a match that was. There are your winners. What a tremendous display of technical wrestling. You gotta hand it to them. The Japanese team, Honda and Kitamura over Star and Royal. Well, I tell you something, right off the bat, we see that the Japanese ladies are here. Ooh. They mean business. They sure do. Here today on the Super Ladies Showdown. And if you're gonna have to keep a scorecard of the United States versus Japan, the first mark goes to the team from Japan. But I think the LPWA Japanese tournament could change things just a little bit because dangerous Denise Storm is in that one, and I'm looking forward to that coming All up right. a little bit later Let's on. Let's go right now to Mitch, Mick Karsh. He is standing by in the tunnel. That's easy for you to say. In the opening round to determine a Japanese ladies champion, Denise Storm, you have a very tough opponent in Susan Green. Susan Green is from the archives of wrestling. She's big, but she's going down. She's not tough. I'm going to beat. Ladies and gentlemen, very confident indeed, Denise Storm. Nick? Now, Nick, does experience pay off? Denise uh, Storm, three years, Sue Green, three? Or 22, well, pardon 22. me. 22. So, uh, actually, Sue Green admits to 238 pounds. There's a tremendous weight advantage, a tremendous experience advantage, but for some reason or another, I got a strange feeling. I got a feeling that I'm, I want to go with the rookie this time. Let's go with it. All right, let's go down to Jim and Joe. All right, it is time now for our second match of the great Super Ladies Showdown. This one will be featuring Dangerous Denise Storm. As we see her coming through the curtains now, let's go to Al Darusha for the introduction. Introducing first in the corner to my right, weighing in at 163 pounds from Minneapolis, Minnesota, she is Denise Storm. Dangerous Denise Storm being and introduced. Her opponent hails from Austin, Texas. Weighing in at 210 pounds, she is Susan Green. Referee for this bout, 
is Bruce Kreitzman. Down the ring ringside for all the action. Denise. Look at this. Dangerous Denise. Denise Storm has started out wild. There are two big ones and two bad ones in the ring today, Joe. Yeah, he's trying to sneak attack Susan Green. Green's not going to put up with that. Now, Green doesn't even have her jacket off yet, and we're already into this match, Jim. Brother, I'll tell you what, this is the opening round of the LPWA Japanese Championship Tournament. One of the first round matches, and it's started off with a bang, brother. They are going nuts. Dangerous Denise Storm, my favorite in the tournament. I think she's going to take it. But Susan Green, the big cowgirl from Texas, she is going to do everything in her power to make this a Donnybrook and to go on and advance to the second round. All right, they're outside the ring right now. The referee is tolling the count. Whoa. But Denise Storm was just running at first. Oh. And then Susan Green runs into that steel metal pole shoulder first. And now it's which one got hurt the worst. It looks like most of the damage went to Susan Green on this. And now Denise Storm just throws her in again. Brother, I'll tell you what. Dangerous Denise started it out. Susan Green retaliated, but now Denise has gained the advantage when Susan Green went shoulder first into that ring post. And right now, finally back in the ring. That referee, he's not only a customer of the hair club for men, but he's also the president. <laughs> Susan Green is in some trouble right now. Denise Storm attacked from behind to start the match. Green had quite a nice comeback outside the ring, but she took two uh, times she went into that ring post. But it looks like now she's trying to come back once more. Whoa! That's three times she's been able to nail Denise Storm before Denise could get anything in. That last boot may have caught her a little low. Don't know whether it matters, but Susan Green so far has been able to hold her own despite having been run into that ring post. One, two, three, four. Denise, now what, what, is, what was she doing to her boot just now, Jim? Guys, she must have been tying her boot. I don't know what she was doing. Maybe her boot came untied. That's the yeah, only so thing she, I can imagine. So she just took a time out there in the middle of the ring to tie it back, right? Well, it's very dangerous. Didn't your mother ever tell you to keep your shoes tied? You could trip and break your neck. Right, right now, referee Bruce Kreitzman checking to see whether or not Susan Green wants to submit. Hey, come on, break it up. One, two, three. A blatant chokehold. The referee trying to count Denise Storm off, but every time she lets go, she goes right back to it. Now she's pulling Storm up. Veal Storm brings her over, and you notice that she's got her by the hair as she's doing it. That's twice. Now she's going after the arm of Susan Green. Green, You can hear them screaming, Joe. They're giving it everything they've got. First round match. Whoever wins this match has to go on, and if they want to win the tournament, has to wrestle and win twice more right, today. You, you mentioned earlier that right here on the Super Ladies Showdown, whoever wins this Japanese title of the LPWA is going to have to win three matches today. I mean, think about that. Three times in one day, they're going to have to be victorious to walk away with that title. That's exactly right. And, and see, you, you see Dangerous Denise once again trying to tie her boots because she seems to be having a little problem with her equipment. But she's got Susan Green locked up. Susan in the arm bar, Dangerous Denise. All right, Denise. I love that angle. Yeah, she's pulling, pulling her up by the hair. Throws Green in and comes off with a huge clothesline that took Susan Green to the mat. And now Denise Storm trying for a cover. She doesn't get it. Susan Green is not ready. And look at there. You're right. I do believe her boot laces are untied. Sure are. And brother, now she's going up the top rope. She's going to the top. This is her big move. Her gut shot. Susan Green caught her in the gut. Well, I think Denise Storm thought that Susan Green was hurt more than she was and went for that big move off the top rope. Susan Green, though, She's throwing her right out of the ring, right out on the floor. Now, there she goes. Now we see that she is tying that boot lace. The referee telling Susan Green she's going to have to back up and let Denise get back in the ring. Wait a minute. She's doing more than tying a boot lace. What? What could she be doing? I have no idea. Susan Green tying up with a referee. In the meantime, Denise Storm getting some rest on the outside, but now Green goes after Storm. Susan Green bringing Denise Storm back in the ring the hard way. Has her backed up in the ropes. 
Sends her off across the ring. And a big back drop. Denise tore him down. You know, a lot of controversy in the wrestling world over who is Rush Limbaugh's favorite woman wrestler. Is it Denise Storm or Terry Power? And that's something maybe we ought to try to ask Rush. I know he's a big LPWA fan, and we ought to try and find out because a lot of people say Denise Storm is his favorite wrestler. Well, you know, Rush Limbaugh has the EIB network while I'm starting my EIW, Excellence in Wrestling Network. Right Joe, here. don't expect Come to on, be a part of it. Right here in the LPWA is a tremendous place if you're going to show excellence. Look at this. She's pulling her hair out by the roots. The referee just yanked Susan Green back. And now Susan Green and the referee are getting into it. In the meantime... In the meantime... She was doing more than just tying up her boots. She's got a chain. Bingo! Holy mackerel! She mackle. had a chain and now just throws it away. Referee didn't oh. see it. Two, three. Oh, I knew she was up to more than just tying her boot. She had a chain in that boot. The winner. fish. She I looks like it. a Mrs. Paul's filet. I knew all of those times she was going down to that boot. I knew that she was trying to do more than just lace up those boot straps. She had a chain in her boot and she just used it to lay out Susan Green. And I, let me tell you something. The referee needs to keep a closer eye on Denise Storm in the rest of this tournament. Well, let me just tell you now, Joe, what actually happened. Oh, what actually God. happened. <laughs> Dangerous Denise Storm had a, had a bracelet, a bracelet around her wrist, something like this gold watch that she forgot to take off before she entered the ring. She was trying to keep Susan Green from stealing that bracelet, so she was holding on to it. She hit her with the other hand, did not use a foreign object. The winner of the match is Dangerous yeah, Denise Storm. Right. Let's go to our next yeah, bit got of business here Bonnie today. Blackstone is standing by, and she is in the hospitality suite with an up-close and personal look at one of our uh, wrestlers. What a great matchup we just witnessed here on this pay-per-view Super Ladies exclusive. Bonnie Blackstone and Reggie Bennett, just one of the many Super Ladies involved in this great Super Ladies showdown here. I'm in the hospitality suite, and this is where we have an opportunity to talk up close and maybe personal about some of the bouts we just have taken a look at here. We saw Denise Storm as she defeated Susan Green in that one. You're about to step out into uh, the auditorium. You're going to be taking on Yakuri Osawa. If you win this one, Reggie, you'll be taking on Denise Storm for the LPD. WA Japan crown. Well, um, I'm really excited about being here. I've been in Japan for the last seven months. Yeah. Uh, I've I've uh, had matches before with uh, Yukuri Osawa. I've won those, but she's very good. She's a very very tough opponent and. It's nice to be fighting her on my home ground. <laughs> yes, you do have a lot of fan support here. But let's talk about some of the things that you learned during your seven-month journey there. Have you gone back and maybe studied some of the videotapes and analyzed your mistakes, your weaknesses, and some of your, your, your good high pots? Well, over there, you have to wrestle, you know, five days out of the week, and you're on the road a lot. So I've had a lot of experience in the ring with these girls. Uh, they wrestle fast and furious, and it's... They're incredible. So, yeah, I've learned a lot, and it's, it's going to help, I hope. You were talking about the advantages of being on maybe a home turf field here in the United States, and I know a lot of your fans have seen you before. They're going to be chanting, Reggie, Reggie. But right now, what we're going to do is go to Nick Bockwinkle and Sue Henning. They're standing by with an analysis. Now, Nick, in the past matches that we've had, years and weight have not made that much of a difference. We had Denise Storm with 24 years and Sue Green... Uh, or pardon me, Denise Storm, three years, Sue Green, 22. Now we go down here. The years of experience between Reggie Bennett and Yukari are pretty much the same. Now let's go to that weight factor, Nick. Well, the weight factor, I'm going to have to go with Reggie Bennett. I've also seen Reggie Bennett wrestle a number of times. I don't have that much knowledge about Yukari, but the thing I do know about Reggie, she's a tremendous competitor. She knows how to use that weight, and she will do it. And, I, and I, I've got to go with Reggie on this one. I would have to go, too, even though the years, the years are similar. I think the weight is going to be a big factor in this one. It really is. Let's go down to Joe and Jim. All right. We are getting ready for our next match. This one featuring Reggie Bennett and another Japanese competitor. Let's go as we see Yukari coming to the ring. Thank you, sir. 
Her name is Yukari Osawa. And as you can see there, this is her first time in the USA. She says, I fight hard style. Taekwondo is her specialty. That's Korean karate. All right, let's go to Al Darusha. Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues here on the LPWA. Sensational lady wrestling action. The best you're going to see anywhere in the world. Believe me. Reggie Bennett has been competing in Japan, wrestling as she said, for seven months. Introducing from Tokyo, Japan, weighing in at 132 pounds, she is Yukari Osawa. And her opponent, weighing in at 189 pounds from Venice Beach, California. Ladies and gentlemen, she is Reggie Bennett. A referee for this battle is Eddie Sharpie down to ringside. All right. Hey, Joe, I'll tell you what. I understand that Reggie Bennett's fame has been spreading far and wide. And believe me, from looking at her, that's not all that's been spreading. 189 pounds. you got to be kidding me. She's right. bulked up for this tournament. I guess she figures she spent all that time in Japan. She scouted these Japanese opponents. If she can't outquick them, she'll outweigh them. Use that bulk. All right, and that's just what she's doing right now. As you see, she's taking Osawa and throwing her into the ropes and then just diving back. Power slam now from Reggie Bennett. And yes, Reggie Bennett will be the largest competitor in this tournament today, if I understand correctly. You could say that if Haystacks Calhoun was entered. And right now, there's that Taekwondo coming to the fore, but Reggie Bennett has her opponent well scouted. You know, I've got to make a comment about the fans here in Rochester, Minnesota. Great, aren't they? No, they're not. They're a bunch of bums because they're booing these Japanese girls. They want the hometown girls to win at all costs. They don't appreciate talent. They don't appreciate ability. If this was Japan, the audiences would be cheering for the quality of the competitors, not from where they were born or where they come from. I think what it has to do, Jim, is who they are taking on. I mean, Reggie Bennett, for instance, is one of the most popular wrestlers in ladies professional wrestling and the LPWA. Yeah, so yeah. Whoever, whoever she takes on, the fans are obviously going to be supporting Reggie. She's one of the most popular wrestlers in the LPWA, especially with the owners of all the buffets in the state of Minnesota. All right, as you can see in the Which ring Which I right know now, you understand something about Joe Pettacino. I haven't found one yet. I, I, understand, I understand every time you come down the street, they hang up a sign and the window says closed. All I know is that I think the fans here in Minnesota are tremendous. The fans that have turned out today in an ice storm, that I'll tell you right now, if we had had this ice storm in Atlanta, Georgia, we would have closed that city for a month. And yet we still have a good turnout here today in the ice storm. People were able to get here. They wanted to see the wrestling that much. So I think that we should talk and, and mention the fact how much we appreciate these fans showing up yeah, here yeah. in this storm. What do you expect? They all own sled dogs up here. Right now, Reggie Bennett taking over on a sour. Reverse chin lock. Asawa has the arm coming out in a hammerlock. Hey, reverse Beautiful it, reversal. Move. Not only is she well versed in Taekwondo, but she's a wrestler as well. And even though she is giving up a lot of weight, she's faster than Reggie Bennett and a lot more vicious. It looks like she just ran her face right in the mat. Here's a move. There's a drop kick now. Double with both feet. Just right into the chest of Reggie Bennett. There's another drop kick. Didn't get all of it. Bennett tried to back up. Almost got out of it, but she goes for another one. Look out. Clear the ringside. Here comes Reggie Bennett. Wait a minute. Reggie Asawa. Bennett is outside. Asawa's going to the top rope. Yukari Asawa going to the top rope. She's got. Surely she is not. Yeah, yeah she did. Dives on Bennett from the top rope. A what a move. body on Reggie Bennett. Knocks Bennett down. But Bennett gets back and just throws Asawa back toward the ring. And now where they're going, they're right into that railing. Almost into our cameraman. Evidently, all that extra padding paid off for Reggie Bennett. She was able to sustain that blow from the top rope. She dove a good 10 feet in the air. And now back in the ring. Beautiful, good ring, side salto. Takes her over, down to two. Reggie Bennett looking really good against this Japanese competitor. 
This also a match in our tournament to name a Japanese LPWA champion. It will be the first international. Oh, a chop from Osawa. Ben Bennett says more. Oh, come on. says more. Do it again. Yeah. Well, oh, teacher to say more. Do it again. Well, this time Osawa with a flying clothesline takes Bennett down. <laughs> Bennett kicks out at the two count. Your brother. Jimmy, this this match has quite a difference in size between the two competitors. Probably the biggest difference we're going to have all night. I would say that that's true. That's certainly the case. And right now, you get a different viewpoint on things. It's Reggie Bennett trying to power out of that headlock and does so. She does have the leverage. And what a good move now. Good wrestling move by Reggie Bennett as she tripped. Using that back leg, tripped Osawa and brought her down. And Bennett now with the upper hand as she has got uh, Osawa tied up. You see the way she has the top wrist lock applied, using her own arm as a as a, uh, a lever, but now decides to relinquish the hold. Has a big handful of hair and gonna go for more punishment on you, curious. Now, when Pitt to her there that knocked the wind right out of her but she was able to roll over there's a big knee lift that hurt me reggie bennett not about to give up but neither is osawa and you got to give this girl credit for guts beautiful move down here by bennett a suplex and osawa is down bennett goes for the cover again one two and osawa once again now that she was trying to smother her there that was a little bit of a lackadaisical uh, type uh, coverage. Well, Reg yeah, Reggie Bennett may be running out of steam at this point because you can tell the Japanese girl got to have better cardiovascular conditioning. There's a side suplex. Reggie Bennett needs to put this thing away quickly because you know the Japanese girl can outlast her count of two and she comes One out more. again. All right, Bennett said something there. I think One more. One more, all right. She's going to go for it again. But look at this. Oh. Goes down. I guess one more was not the correct. Uh, oh, oh, oh my God! Oh, look at those kicks. The Bennett just grabs the foot. Now what's she gonna do? Another suplex. Four times Osawa has been suplexed in one form or another during this match. Now where's Bennett going? She's going for a side salto. Does that? Another form of suplex. She suplexed this girl till she suplex drunk. You've got to give it to Yukuri Osawa. She had a, a vast, vast differential in the weight. She had a vast, vast audience against her, but she still gave it everything she had. Osawa still stretched out in the ring. She fought until oh. she couldn't fight anymore. Well, you know, and that's the Japanese way. The tilt to world slam is a devastating move by Reggie Bennett, and she may be able to use that to go all the way. But right now, let's go. I bet she's going to go all the way. All right, we have got standing by. Uh, in the tunnel, an interview with Mick. So let's go to that right now. Desiree Peterson, you're about to do battle with a very, very tough Japanese opponent in Kondori. What do you know about this lady? I know nothing about her, but I've wrestled several of the Japanese women before. They're very competitive, very strong, but she's got a lot of competition here in me, and she's going to know when she hits the ring what wrestling is all about. That big challenge match coming up. Okay, coming up now, we've got Peterson and Kondori. Here we've got the weight the same, the age is the same, and almost the same years of experience. How is that going to come out in the match? Well, in a situation like this, what I would then look at is the kind of training that they have. The uh, Japanese have a tendency to put in a lot of the martial arts, whereas with the Americans, it's basically wrestling, catch as catch can as we've known it. So that uh, if, if the Japanese girl can mix the two of them, we'll be in a lot, she'll be in a lot better shape. But I guess I'm just going to say, flip of the coin on this one. And it's going to come down, who, like we said, trains the hardest and who's got that ability to put that experience to work. And we're going to see that it. right now in the ring. Let's go to Joe and Jim at ringside. Well, there we you have uh, Joe comments from my favorite guy, the champ, Dick Bockwinkle, and he even he can't pick this one. And boy, isn't that Sue getting cute? She, she's almost perfect. Yes, yeah, she's, I was just going to say almost a perfect 10. Coming to the ring now, Kandore, 
Shinobu Kandori. She has come to the United States to show that the Japanese fighting style is number one. And I hear this is a rough and tough competitor. She is going to be taking on Desiree Peterson in uh, this tournament. It should be a tremendous match as we are now looking oh, at Kandori. She, she looks all business, I'll tell you that. Very interesting outfit on Kandori. And of course, the Japanese ladies are uh, very much into their outfits. Each one very distinct, very unique. Desiree Peterson coming to the ring. Of course, she's a former champion in several organizations and uh, entered this tournament to uh, come in and try to be the Japanese champion of the LPWA. Wrestling action. Introducing in the corner to my right from Tokyo, Japan, she is Shinobi Kandari. And ladies and gentlemen, her opponent from Copenhagen, Denmark, weighing in at 151 pounds, she is Desiree Peterson. And now down to Joe Pedicino and Jim Cornette at ringside. Desiree Peterson taking on Shinobi Kondori in what could be a uh, really a top-notch match here in the LPW. Oh, an extended hand of friendship, and we said Kondori is all business, and that's exactly what she is. You know, those, those girls from Denmark, they've got those great tans. I'll tell you what, she's going to tan Desiree Peterson's hide if Desiree don't watch out. Well, this is truly an international match, Jim. Uh, the competitor from Denmark versus a competitor from Japan. And Shinobi Kandori has made it known that she wants to be the Japanese LPWA champion. And she's got to roll up. One, two. And Desiree Peterson just barely able to kick out. Almost packaged into a three count right there. That would have been a very fast, quick fall. You know, we said earlier five Japanese girls in the tournament, three Americans. Should have said five Japanese, two American, one from Denmark. But then again, hey, who's counting? And right now, Kandori, I'll tell you what, she is on Desiree Peterson like a cheap suit. Well, she said she wanted to be the champion. And she's got an attitude. I like that. Yeah, well, you would, Jim. She had, as a matter of fact, the girls in the dressing room tell me that she is a uh, Jim Cornette type person. Very much of an attitude. Oh! And Peterson. Desiree Peterson looks like she's not going to put up with it. You see George Napolitano in the background yeah. shooting some photos. International photographers here from all kind of two. From all over the world, the press has come, the wrestling press, to shoot this event. Greatest right event in the history of ladies professional wrestling is exactly what Napolitano told me, that they were going to put the cover of the magazine covering the showdown today. Well, I think that's a foregone conclusion. This is the greatest event in ladies wrestling history, and we're here to be a part of it. And I'll do a good job if you don't interrupt me too much. I'm sorry about that, Jim. By the way, how's, how's Bonnie back there in the hospitality suite? She's, she being real hospitable. I'll well, have to ask the crew later on. She is, she is back in the hospitality suite. Wow, wow, look at that. Look how quickly Kandori went into the abdominal stretch. Easy for you to say. That's I just exactly. call it the octopus. So, well, no, the octopus is with the right leg over Desiree Peterson's head. That's that, the octopus. That's why we have you and Nick Bockwinkle here, Jim. And listen, the people are starting to get behind Desiree Peterson. You're the USA, USA champ. USA. Interesting for a lady She's from, from Denmark. Denmark. She's from Denmark, for heaven's sake. Probably got a boyfriend named Sven or something. Peterson now with Kandori down. And Peterson asking the crowd if she should do it again. The crowd says yes. The crowd says do it again. Well, Desiree Peterson showing that she's not a shrinking violet either. Runs her right into the top cable. Those are metal airplane cables underneath garden hose wrapped with tape. Those are not actual ropes, Joe, and those things will cut you open if they hit you in the face, and those will definitely hurt you and leave you with a bad attitude. They've missed each other twice, and now a flying body. But look at this, Kandori reverses it one. No, Desiree. Able to get a foot on the ropes. Kondori thought she had this match won, Jim. Well, Kondori doesn't seem like she's going to just uh, quit yet. She's still going after a close line in the turnbuckle. And now going after the eyes. This is what I meant when I said she had an attitude. Going and raking the eyes. And just look at that look on her face. 
Hey, if I, if I went to a foreign country, tried to compete to the best of my ability, and had all these rednecks up here yelling and screaming and booing me, well, I'd get nasty, too. Jim, you get nasty no matter where you are. Well, I figure do unto others before they do unto you. Desiree Peterson in bad shape right now. Comes back with a foot. Now, Condori was not expecting that. And I think that might be what is helping Desiree is some unexpected moves that the Japanese lady is not ready for. Takes Kondori, throws her into the ropes, comes off. Oh, oh. Oh, right into that chest area. Now Desiree, picking her up by the hair, is gonna fight fire with fire here, Jim. I think that's obvious. Well, uh, to, to join the old cliche team, that's what she's gonna do with her. Whoa. DDT with a front twist. She tried that move once more and, and ran right into a DDT. And now what is this, a power Watch bomb? this one. Yes, power a power bomb. bomb. One, two, and Desiree Peterson is eliminated from the tournament. Shinobi Kondori will continue on in the tournament. There is a look at the winner of this match. You've got to give it to Kondori. I have to admit, that was a tremendous move. It was a tremendous situation there. She did look good. And yes, it's got to be hard for these ladies in a foreign country, Jim. Uh, I think so far they're doing very well. Well, I'll tell you, you could just see from Kondori when she came to the ring, she's not the type of girl that likes to go out and look for lace doilies. She's all business. She's mean. She's nasty. And I think she's going to do well in the second round of the tournament. But right now, we've got to go to another bit of business here yeah. on the Super Lady Showdown. That's right. Bonnie is standing by in the hospitality Bonnie. suite. She has an <laughs> up-close and personal look at one of today's competitors. How close is she getting? We're in the hospitality suite of the Mayo Civic Center, and of course, you're watching the great Super Lady Showdown. I'm here with Denise Storm. I keep telling you about his dangerous Denise Storm. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous Denise dangerous. Storm. You proved exactly what dangerous means earlier in your win over Susan Green, but now it looks like, Denise, you'll be going out to take on Reggie Bennett, the winner of this contest. I have never had a problem with Reggie Bennett. This is not going to be any different from a regular taping of the LPWA shows. There's not a little nervousness or butterflies Why knowing I be that the nervous or butterfly over Reggie Bennett. I don't think so, no. Because the winner gets to advance on and take on the top of the Japanese stars. This thing is elevating into something that is going to be, of course, the most prestigious title in all of ladies wrestling. You and have no qualms. I deserve it. I am very good at what I do. I'm not worried about Reggie Bennett. Yes, I'm a little excited about wrestling a Japanese woman, but I can handle it. How have you prepared yourself, Miss Storm, in taking on some of Japan's finest? It's not something that I know that you're very familiar with. I have been running, I have been training, I've been eating rice, I've been doing whatever I have to do to do it and get it done right. All right, now let's talk about maybe the hometown advantage. You have a lot of friends here watching the pay-per-view, a lot of people who will be cheering for you, but then there are those who remember some of your other tactics and they will not be cheering for you out in the arena area. Your comments towards them. I'm not a baby face. I'm not a good person. I've never done it for the fans. This is no different for me. I'm doing this for me, for me and mine, not them. All right, now let's go to Nick Bockwinkle and Sue Henning. They're standing by with some more analysis. Thank you, Bonnie. Coming up now, we've got Mizoki Endo taking on Harley Saito. Now here we've got age is almost the same, only four years separating the two. And the weight, the weight is the factor here, and also more so the experience. Endo's got two years experience, where Saito's got six, Nick. The bigger girls got less experience, the smaller girls got more experience. They've both been trained in the same country and they're both in the same styles. Uh, I guess if I had to say 25 pounds or say 20% difference in weight or 15% difference versus that four years of experience, I would want to go with the four years of experience and sacrifice the weight. Now, see, I'm, I'm going to have to go toward the weight just from the earlier matches that we've had. I'm going to go with the weight on this one, and that would be uh, Mizoki Endo. So we'll have to see what happens now on this one. Let's get down to Joe and Jim. Okay, now this should be interesting. Two Japanese competitors facing each other. Oh! Look at this Sherman tank. Mizuki Ito is her name. It's her first time in America. She does love it here, she says. And as a matter of fact, uh, some of the girls told me she was talking about the possibility of trying to stay here for a while and wrestle in the LPWA. Hey, who's going to argue with her? <laughs> as you can see, she does look like a little fire plug, as a matter of fact. She is going to be taking on, as we said, another Japanese competitor. This is Harley Saito, also her first time in America, but she has fought at a Navy uh, military base there in Japan. And uh, this should be quite a match. Saito. Uh, well, I'm glad you took the Evelyn Wood course. I couldn't read all that information that quick. <laughs> all right, let's go to our rigging out. Ladies and gentlemen, and introducing in the corner to my right, weighing in at 100. 
and 46 pounds. She is from Tokyo, Japan, Mizuki Endo. And her opponent, weighing in at 124 pounds, she is Harley Saito. Referee is Bruce Kreitzman. Down to ringside for all the action. Of being one of the most exciting matches on the card. These two ladies are very familiar with each other from Japan. They've wrestled each other several times over there, and here they are now on the Super Ladies Showdown. You know, let's mention something just one second about a, a lady who's not here, and that is Magnificent Mimi. As we've got this match starting off with a drop kick, Mimi was supposed to be here, but at the last minute we found out that because of a movie that she is working on, she was not able to make the plane connections and be here. Well, so, Magnificent Mimi, unfortunately not here today. We were sort of looking forward to seeing what kind of costume she would come out, and I was really looking forward to seeing her against one of these Japanese competitors, but unfortunately she could not uh, get back to the United States from the movie on, that she is uh, currently working on. That's a shame Mimi couldn't be here. As a matter of fact, I know that... A lot of people were anxious to see her wrestle one of these Japanese girls, but alas, alas, not to be. But right now, two Japanese competitors, and I've been anxious to see this Harley Saito. We've heard so much about her. She's got the Harley Davidson emblem on, on her back. You know, American, American symbols and American brands, American uh, things are very big in Japan right now. They are not like the Americans, so racist that they uh, they knock the other countries. They like American stuff. That's why they're buying yeah, so much of it. Right, they like it. That's why they don't let it in as much as they should. Thank goodness the LPWA has made all of the arrangements. And, of course, you know, our next big pay-per-view coming up this summer is due to come. Woo! Woo! Boy, she cleaned her clock with that one. Harley Saito, quick snap suplex. Count of two and no. Oh. Just short of a three count. I'll tell you what, this girl, as my good friend Lance Russell would say, is a stem winder. She is something else. And look at the look of determination on the face there of Harley Saito. As I was about to say, our next big pay-per-view that will be coming up this summer is due to come from Japan. And we are looking very much forward to being in the land of the rising sun for our next big pay-per-view event. Be watching your cable systems for news of that big LPWA event coming up this summer. Whoa, there we go. Endo decides, hey, I'm going to slow this girl down. I'm going to take her balance. I'm going to take her speed away by working on the legs, and that's exactly what she's doing. Harley Saito, I wonder, uh, you know, I know she's got a fixation with Harley Davidson, but maybe do you think Harley Race ever spent any time in Japan about 20 years ago? No, I don't think that that's... I just, think just wondering. Explain to us, if you will, Jim, the boots that Harley Saito are wearing. I know that they are those kickboxing boots, but you'll notice the pads on the front. Well, Joe, as you can see, count of two, she almost had her. As you said, they are a form of martial arts footwear. That is a full contact karate uh, shin guard and foot guard. In full contact karate, you are not allowed to wear a bare boot, mainly because you can kill somebody. Well, that's the next best thing to killing somebody is wearing one of these shin guards. They pad the boot just enough. It's like a uh, difference between a boxing glove and a bare knuckles fight. Gotcha. Well, as you can see right now, those shin guards are not helping Harley Saito as she is uh, completely wrapped up with the leg scissors by Mizuki Indo. Well, you see, Indo's trying to stay away from those feet. Trying to stay away from this. She's got it down. One, two. Almost a three count as Indo turned Saito over and almost got a three count. If Harley Saito gets any of those kicks unleashed that she's so noted for, she caught her with a good spinning back kick a few minutes ago. She is going to... She's going to go to the kicks, and she's going to be successful if she gets a chance to apply them. That's what Endo's job is, to keep her from it. All right, both ladies now in the middle of the ring. And we said this one had the capability of being one of our better matches, and so far it has been. A two count. The referee's telling us he got a two count. Now Saito coming back. Going after the midsection now of Mizuki Endo. You know, you're always going to get excellent wrestling, and what's more, from the Japanese girls, you're always going to get the hardest fight. That's what they call it. We want to fight strong, fight hard. It's a point of honor for them. They train religiously. They work constantly to better themselves. Two of those karate-style kicks right in the next And in Zagiri. I was going to wait for this. By Antonio Inoki, count of two. As she reached out, not only did she kick out, 
but to make sure her shoulders were not on the mat and Dope actually bridged out. These Japanese girls, like I said, tremendous dedication. They will fight to the very last bit of energy in their body. Count of two, she bridges and again. Again, again Endo bridges out. And Saito saying it should have been a three count. She thought she had Endo down for a three count, but not to be. And now we see a suplex, it looks like, coming up. Is that what? She's got her set for a snap suplex. Quick snap, quick snap. And follows and a knee it. Drop. And again, Endo comes out. You have got to admit, Endo has got to have been showing more gumption than I think Saito was expecting. They're fighting for the championship of their own country, and they are not going to give up, not going to lose, not going to be pinned without giving it everything they've got. There's a boomerang. A, got, and then just dives on top of her one, two, and this time it's Saito that kicks out at the two count. She's going to go for it again. Or is she going to try to turn her for the Boston crowd? I think that's where she's headed. She's trying to get her over. She's trying to turn her, and she's got it. She's got a full Boston crowd. The referee asking Saito if she wants to give. Saito is saying no. I think we'll be here till tomorrow before Harley Saito gives it up, just judging from what I've seen of her so far. Saito trying to reach for the rope. If she can just make the rope, she can break the hole. Look at Endo, how she is almost just sitting on Saito. Saito reaching for the ropes, and I, she made it. She got to the ropes now, because the referee's going to make her break the hole. But look at Endo going right for the small of the back, knowing that that's the part that she's been working on. She goes right for the small of the back, and here we go again. She's going to, now she took her right out to the middle of the ring. But Saito smart enough to make the move before she gets turned over. Saito keeping her balance, crawling on her back. Yeah, big body block. It's the ropes again, another one. Only Saito can't get her equilibrium. Saito now down after three straight body blocks. Where is she going here? Uh-oh. Tombstone power driver. Yeah. Oh, shut up. three straight uh, shoulder blocks and then a shoulder breaker. Oh! A flying reverse she kick. Got her. And I think it's obvious where she hit her as Endo grabbed straight for the mouth and the nose now. All right, this time it is Saito going and it is a tombstone pile driver. She got her with the reverse spin kick then the tombstone she got the three kick. Saito able to take a very bad situation for herself, reverse it, and she did use the Tombstone Pile Driver to win this match, and what an exciting match it was. Saito taking the uh, count of Endo, and Saito, of course, looking very good in my opinion, Jim. Well, I tell you, I think that just goes to show and testifies to the lengths that these Japanese girls will go to to win the LPWA Japanese Championship. They don't want an American to represent their home country, just like an American wouldn't want a Japanese right. to represent theirs. All right, let's go back to the tunnel now. Mick is standing by. Ladies and gentlemen, this event truly international in scope. My guest at this time, one of the Japanese ladies on this big card, Eagle Sawai, welcome to the United States. Hello. And Eagle, you have a very, very tough opponent this afternoon, Midori Saito. Yes, uh, very good. All right, do you have any special plans for this bout? Uh, but, mm, number one, Japanese. Ladies and gentlemen, very confident, Eagle Sawai. Thanks, Mick. Coming up now, we've got Eagle Sawai and Midori Saito. Mm -hmm. Now here we've got the years uh, experience, three years difference between the two. The weight, um, pretty much the same, and also years of age, how old they both are, pretty much the same. So a lot could depend here on the on the years experience. You got that. But before I get to that, I just want to say that not only is this pretty lady sitting here with me, helping me out and asking me these questions, but she also happens to be the daughter of Mr. Larry Henning and the sister of none other than Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect. And thank you for pronouncing the last name correctly. Very well, you do that. It's been around. I got hit with it enough times <laughs> in my life. I'm going to go with Eagle Sawai. I saw her working out yesterday, and uh, I didn't get to see a chance to see Saito work out, but I was impressed with Saito, and I'm going to go with her. Let's get down to Joe and Jim. Holy mackerel, Joe! What in the world? Eagle Sawai. 
She wants to tour the U.S. I guess she's starting out here. I don't know, 170 centimeters, kilograms. I don't know that stuff. I never could figure it out even when I was in school. But I'll tell you what, she's got some size to her. And what's more, I think she's trying to psych everybody out by coming in here. Uh, look like she's uh, dressed to go. I don't know, maybe a, looks, a, a looks like a costume ball. She looks like she's going to a dance. I'd hate to see what kind of dancing they do there. Here we have Midori Saito. This is her first time in America. She wrestles Japanese style and would like to learn to wrestle maybe American style. This will be another exciting match as uh, I can't wait to see Eagle Sawai in action. Let's go to our ring announcer. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, with continuing great lady professional wrestling action. A fantastic afternoon of action here. Introducing from Tokyo, Japan, ladies and gentlemen, she is Ego Sawai'i. In the corner to my right, Ego Sawai'i. And her opponent, ladies and gentlemen, she is Mendori Saito. Mendori Saito. Referee is Eddie Sharkey down to ringside. Dory Saito taking on Eagle Sawai, and Eagle has taken off the ball ground, ball gown dress, and uh, ball gown dress, ball ball dress gown. Uh, well, whatever. What about a skirt? Wait a minute, action already! Boy, they, I tell you what, they don't let no grass grow. These Japanese ladies. Jim, this match may be too fast for us to call. Like we'll they, try and keep up with it. Like they say where I'm from, if you want to run with the big dogs, you got to get up off the porch. And in this case, this girl's a big dog because she got up and she's getting after it. Can you imagine the press, the pressure, the stress on these girls? You note in the statistics on their entrances, all of them, 21, 22, 23 years of age. They've been professionals for five and six years. A lot of them turned pro at the age of 15 in Japan. It's a young girl's game, professional wrestling in Japan. But can you imagine the stress coming to a country, a 20-hour plane flight away that in some cases they've never been to before, competing on a pay-per-view event. They have got to have butterflies like nobody's business. Well, they've got to know that there are people back in Japan watching this. And so they are, as you said, they are trying to put their best foot forward and they want to represent their country as the Japanese champion. And I just, I got to think that, you know, even though they're so vicious in the ring, even though they're such great athletes, they're still young girls. Put yourself in that position. A 20 year old girl, 21 year old girl coming this far, competing in an event of this magnitude. It's got to, it's got to affect your game. It's got to affect your match. Well, Eagle Sawai doesn't seem to be bothering her. Look at, she is just <laughs> tossing Saito around by the hair. And uh, Eagle Sawai, one of the top lady wrestlers in Japan. Uh, as you can see, she has her name written there on her boots. And uh, she, she is just a devastating wrestler. But look at this. Oh! Tried that sunset flip, but it didn't quite pan out. And now just a chokehold. I hope things work out. I would love to see Eagle Sawai taking on Reggie Bennett. Oh, so you're, oh, so you're just going to throw Midori Saito out, out no, of the garbage, no, right? No, not at all, but I'm saying size-wise, I think Eagle Sawai and Reggie Bennett would be one heck of a match. Size-wise, I think Reggie Bennett and Man Mountain Mike would be a heck of a confrontation. And there you see Saito using her speed and her quickness, and now she says, come on, come over here. Oh. Big drop kick off the rope. She's running in the next turnbuckle. She's out running Eagle Sawai. Eagle Sawai trying to catch her coming off there and finally does. Sawai so says that ain't gonna work twice in a row, ladies. So uh, here's the penalty for trying that one twice. Oh, yeah. A two count, a two count, but then Eagle able to get her shoulder up off the mat. Now what is Saito gonna try here? She's going for a Boston Crab on this big woman. Well, maybe she learned a little thing or two from our last match because that's just a half crab, but that could be good enough. She's got that point of balance good, got the toe hooked under the arm, stretching back on that knee. The bigger the girl, the more likely she is to have knee problems. That's correct, and that's exactly what Saito is working on. 
Side. Look how she's got that leg bent back, Jim. No give up. No give up. No give up, Joe. That's what she's saying. No give up. She knows that much English. Midori Saito. I think she's quite content to keep Eagle Sawai down on the mat as long as she can. And this time it is Sawai that makes the ropes, and the referee is going to have to break the hold. But not before Saito gets a good kick right into that back. Now, if she's smart, Jim, she's going to continue to work on the back of Sawai. Whoa! At first, she's got to take her down a peg or two. Hooks that leg, but it's on the ropes. Will Eddie Sharkey? Yes, Eddie Sharkey. You know, Eddie Sharkey not noted for his eagle eyes, but in this case, he saw it. Reversed by Sawai. Comes off and a backbreaker. Drops her right across that huge knee. Saito kicks out at the two count. I think Sawai thought she had her. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, now she's going to take a page out of the same All book. of that weight coming right down on the back there. All of that pressure, and look at the look. Eagle Sawai, very happy with herself right now. And you notice the way Sawai has this applied. She's not going for pressure on the knee as much as pressure on the lower back and the hips. Saito had the Boston Crab applied, stretching the knee, but in this case, oh, I don't know the help. Just a little bit of help. Now she's bringing that point of leverage down a little bit lower. Eddie Sharkey not breaking that hold. I'm a little bit surprised. I'm not surprised at anything Eddie Sharkey does. Good move on the part of Sawai as she grabbed the arm to keep Saito from reaching the ropes. Look how she has got this woman tied up. Boy, I tell you, she's got her tied up like a tax lawyer. And finally, she makes it to the ropes. Sharkey telling her she's got to break it, and that's why I, I don't think he meant the back, but that's what Sawai <laughs> is going for. That's what she was trying to break. Now, what do we got? Gives her a boost to go for an atomic drop, but she flips over behind, tries for a roll-up. Saito couldn't hold on. Ducks the clothesline, hits the ropes. And a, whoa! Whoa. What do you call that, Jim? I call that the end of the match. A three count on one of the most unusual moves. It's almost like a tilt-a-whirl DDT. What an unusual-looking move. And now, Eagle Sawai giving the fans here in Minnesota what for. They are sitting there screaming. Sawai, the winner of that match. And look at this now. Sawai pointing at one of the fans here. Sawai is not very happy with the fans here in the United States. And as you can see, some of the fans in Minnesota giving her a hard time. I would say this. They had better be careful. This woman looks like she could handle herself up huh. in the crowd just as easy as in the ring. I'll tell you what, they're too honorable for lawsuits in Japan, so she may deck a few every now and then. She'll find out it's different in this country, believe me from experience. Mick Karsh is standing by in the tunnel. Our next match is on the way. Let's go see what Mick has to say about that. With me at this time, the Black Venus and her manager, Boogaloo Brown. A big grudge match today with Rock and Robin. Why the grudge? Every match is a grudge, you understand? I don't like anybody, and I don't like you either. Hold it, old girl. Save that for a little later on when it's really counted, because Rock and Robin's gonna bite us more than she can chew as usual, and if that's what it takes to get to the LPWA title, we're gonna do it, because Black Venus is gonna end up on top. Ladies and gentlemen, confidence certainly running rampant in the tunnel today. And you're going to be running too, chump. <laughs> and you know it. <laughs> Thanks, Mick. Once again, now we've got coming up the grudge match. We've got Rock and Robin taking on Black Venus. Uh, wait, not too much of a difference in there. Years experience. Now, Rock and Robin has got five years. Black Venus has got only eight now. She's got three more years on her. Actually, what I think I see here is the fact that Rockin' Robin, is, she comes uh, second generation, uh, father Grizzly Smith. So she's got a lot of background, and uh, the thing that she's got to watch out for is the manager. I had a lot of experiences in those days. Managers can be a tremendous distraction, and if Rockin' Robin's not careful, she looks in the wrong direction, she's going to blow it. Let's well, go down to Jill. Let's go down. We'll have to yeah, see. Let's 
There you have Black Venus you coming know, to the ring. I beg to differ with Sue Henning. I see a lot of difference between Black Venus and Rock and Robin. Well, as you can see, she's recently been put into the singles competition by Boogaloo Brown. He says they went to the pinnacle in the LPWA as far as tag team, and now he wants to take Black Venus all the way to the top. He calls her Black Power. He says there is nothing like her in the world of ladies professional wrestling. But I think we're about to see somebody who just might be able to handle Black Venus, and that is Rocket Robin. I'm very familiar with this lady. And there you see Rocket Robin, former WWF Women's Champion, coming to the ring, sister of pro wrestler Sam Houston, and as Nick Bockwinkle said, the daughter of Grizzly Smith, who teamed with Luke Brown as one of the Kentuckians back years ago in the 60s. Well, you've got to say she comes from a wrestling family. Her toughest opponent ever was Medusa Michelli right here in the LPWA. Let's go to our ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing in the corner to my right. Hey, wait a minute, just a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, I'm out of here. side of the ring and she is oh she says you want to play some sneak attack sister we can handle that you're not going to pull one like that on rocket robin she's been around the wrestling business way too long and you're not going to get away with a sneak attack like that as black venus just found out and needless to say this is not a match in the lpwa japanese title tournament this is a grudge match the first round of the tournament has been completed. We'll see those girls return later on for the second round. But right now, it's time to settle some scores between Black Venus and Rock and Robin. Boogaloo Brown on the outside. You know, you got to say one thing for Boogaloo. I don't like his attitude. I don't like the way he acts. But he always looks sharp. He is a sharp dressed man. He is a veritable paragon of sartorial pulchritude, is Boogaloo Brown. He what? Sartorial pulchritude. I thought he had gone and uh, had Doug Cooper help him pick out some clothes, too. No, no, Doug, he's got an exclusive agreement with me. Whoa! Look at this now. What a right hand that knocked her out. Black Venus knows how to Whoa. wrestle, but loves to brawl. She'd rather be in a good fight than a good wrestling match. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And I think Rocky Robin is going to have to protect herself in every way, shape, and form against that very move right there, a headbutt. And just like the referee says in the instructions before every match, protect yourself at all times. And Rocky Robin should pay heed to that advice. Look at this. She's got her up off the ground, choking her, just throws her to the ground. Referee Baldy Kreitzman telling Black Venus he, that she is going to have to uh, mind her P's and Q's. You never really do get along with the referees, do you, Jim? Well, uh, you know, I've had a lot of problems with them in the past. None my fault, of course. We are coming to you live from Rochester, Minnesota, the home of the famous Mayo Clinic. As a matter of fact, we are in the Mayo Civic Center right now, even as we speak. And we want to uh, welcome everyone who is watching the Super Lady Showdown today on this exclusive pay-per-view event, the first LPWA pay-per-view ever. And we want to thank all the fans who showed up. If you haven't heard, there is a tremendous ice storm here in southern Minnesota today. It was very dangerous getting out. As a matter of fact, if we, honestly, if we had not been here yesterday, I don't know how we would have gotten here, Jim. Can you imagine an ice storm in southern anything? Well, I think right we're going to us now. Wait a minute. Right out in front of us. Right out in front of us. We've got to be careful. Hey, 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 hey Joe, Rock and Robin is bleeding. Rock and Robin is bleeding from the head. She's been busted open. But uh, I don't know whether it was something on the table she was run into, whether it was that big right hand. If we get a shot of Rock and Robin. Rock and Robin is hurt. I think it was from the microphone right here on the table. She got hit. She was slammed head first into it, and now there is blood coming from the forehead of Rock and Robin. Blood on her head, blood on her tights. She is busted bad. 
And that's exactly the kind of advantage that Black Venus wanted. Robin fighting back now. Robin has got Black Venus. She's going to try to bring her outside over the top rope. And she does it. She does it. She brings her over. And they're back out. Jim, I thought with the ladies, we would probably not have to worry about this type of thing. But with Black Venus in the ring and Boogaloo on the outside, you never know what is going to happen. Well, there might be some girl wrestlers in the ring, but I don't see any ladies right well, now. That's a good point. And look at Robin. Robin just took a look at the blood that was on her hands, and I think it has just infuriated her. I saw referee Bruce Kreitzman checking the cut on the head. It's up above the hairline of Rock and Robin. And she might have might have got a, a gash in her eyebrow as well. It's not. Venus is down. Robin is going up on the second rope. Comes down. Oh, Venus brings up the knees. Robin had nowhere to go but right down across both of those raised knees of Black Venus. Boy, these people are getting a Donnie Brook for their money today. Oh, I bet it's worth every cent they pay to get in here. What is happening now? And oh, good three drops her back one. And she did it. She had all the tights while she did it, too. Buckley Brown yelling, grab her tights, grab her tights. And that's exactly what Black Venus did. And Black Venus, boy, spits on a record. from the nose. These girls have been in a scrap. Boogaloo Brown told me Don Cornelius was watching him today, and I know Don's proud. Well, there you Robin, see. Robin, 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 Robin coming out of the ring. Robin coming around behind Black Venus. Look out. Oh. She has knocked Boogaloo for a loop. Boogaloo Brown is down, and Robin is challenging Venus to come on, sister. Now, Boogaloo. Hey, if I was Boogaloo, I don't know what I'd mess with that girl or not. But Boogaloo. Boogaloo, he's getting the soul back in his stroll. Now. Oh, man, he's upset. His lady won the match, but uh, he took quite an interesting situation there at the end of the match. Right now, standing by, we have Mick Karsh. He is back in the tunnel, and I understand that he is with another one of today's competitors. Let's go to Mick Karsh right Woo. now. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest at this time, Reggie Bennett, going into the ring with Denise Storm, the winner to advance to the finals of the tournament. And Reggie, I know you and Denise have had many wars in the past. I'm certain this will be no different. No, it's no different. Um, me and Denise has had a lot of battles. She's uh, tough. She's, she comes prepared, but I'm more prepared. I've been working out in Japan, and I'm out there to do business. I want that title. Ladies and gentlemen, what a war ahead. Denise Storm and Reggie Bennett. Thanks, Mick. Coming up now, we've got Reggie Bennett along with Denise Storm. Nick, mm -hmm. I have to tell you all the way, I'm going with Bennett. She's got the weight and she's got the experience, and I'm not going to argue with her on that one. Well, the only thing is, the first time that we saw Bennett, she didn't have that strong of an opponent. This time, she's got Storm. Storm's a very strong opponent. Storm has shown that she'll try anything she needs to do in order to win. So this is going to be almost like a little battle between... Uh, Two vixens, <laughs> both of them a little with a nasty attitude. Still, though, I'm going to go with Reggie Bennett and right. the weight and the experience on this one. I think All it's right. going to pull for, pull through for her as it did in the past. Let's go down to Jim and Joe. Thank you, Nick. And as you can see, we are in the ring ready for our next match here on the Super Lady Showdown. This is going to be another tournament match. The second round, Denise Storm. Many feel like she is destined to be the champion. She has an attitude of it's going to be you or me, and if it's going to be one of us, it's going to be me. Or you, depending on what the uh, circumstance and what the punishment is. Denise Storm, what a heck of a match she had first time around. This one going to be equally as tough against Reggie Bennett, but I think she is up to the task. Is that the building shaking? Yes, here comes Reggie Bennett. And the people, the people are just tearing the place down to see 
Reggie Bennett come to the ring. Well, as we said, she has superstar status in Japan, and she would very much like to be the Japanese LBWA champion. Let's go to Al Darusha for our ring announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the first bout in our second round to determine the LPWA championship title. Introducing in the corner to my right, from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 163 pounds, she is Denise Storm. And her opponent, from Venice Beach, California, weighing in at 190 pounds, she is Reggie Bennett. Referees Eddie Sharkey, down to Joe Pettisino at ringside. I know what you're gonna say. She I gained know. a pound. She was back there at the hot dog stand since her earlier match. I She's knew. gained a pound already. I knew what you were gonna say. I knew it the minute I heard Al Darusha say 190 pounds. Uh, Darusha, he got the update. Darusha stays on top of things. Darusha's a man after my own heart. He went out and got the update. He didn't want any old information. Well, it may take all 190 pounds of Reggie Bennett to defeat Denise Storm. And even then, some, I tell you what, I think I, my money's on Dangerous Denise, brother. She has it all. She's got the build, she's got the body, she's got the ability, she's got the mental toughness, she's got the attitude, and she's got the experience. I think she can you go You know all what else she probably has? What? That chain that she used earlier today to get into the second round. If she starts messing around with that boot again, I hope this time the referee takes a lot closer look than last time. I don't know what this foot fetish you've got is, Joe, for heaven's sake. All I, all I know is... Uh, Denise Storm, I think, is going to win this tournament. Reggie Bennett, somewhere or other, is going to have to do something to pull this thing out. Well, right now, she is manhandling Denise Storm. Oh, whoa. I don't see Denise, I was just going to say, I don't see Denise Storm putting up with this for long. You know, Reggie Bennett, like you said, she wants to be the LPWA Japanese champion because she's got a, a superstar status in Japan. She did a big soft drink commercial over there. I don't know which one it was. I don't think it was Diet Coke. I'm not sure which one it was. I believe it was Boing Boing. Possibly. She was known as the Boing Boing girl. Well, that was a good Boing right off the chest. And Reggie Bennett looks like she's a bit teed up now. She says, come on, do it again. And look at Denise's story now. Psychology in the ring. Something that reminds me of Nick Bockwinkle. Get the opponent mad and then let him steam. Nick Bockwinkle, the all-time master of psychology. That's why he was so successful in the ring for so long because Nick Bockwinkle was smarter than 99.9% .9 of the opponents that he stepped in the ring with. The knee storm, it looks like her boy worked. She got uh, Bennett frustrated and now she's taking over on Bennett. Throws her into the ropes, off she comes. Talk about a clothesline when it takes somebody the size of Reggie Bennett down. Denise Storm always has a psychological advantage, like we said, because she is smarter than most of her opponents, and wrestling is physical chess. You've not only got to have the physical attributes, but you've got to be able to outthink your opponent as well. Reggie Bennett and Denise Storm right now in a chess game. That's exactly what I would call it, Jim, as the two of them are going back and forth. Oh. There's a chop that sends Denise Storm to the mat. Well, they're trading some licks back and forth in the crowd behind Reggie Bennett here. As a matter of fact, the crowd is all behind Reggie Bennett. Go ahead. Never mind, I already used that one on you. All right, Zinna. Uh, can't get her off her feet. Dangerous Denise couldn't get the leverage. Oh, knee. Did you hear that pop all the way down here? I'm not sure whether that was the knee or the jaw that made that sound. Denise Reggie Storm. Bennett coming up. Wait a minute. Here we go again. That's, what is this outside the ring stuff with these girls? Well, well that, that, that didn't phase her. <laughs> right into the ring post. Reggie Bennett is saying, if you want to brawl, we can brawl. You throw me into the rail, I'll throw you into the ring. Oh, oh. Back and forth, these two women are oh. going. Oh. Who are those chops from my job, Jim? I'll tell you what, the Nature Boy would be proud of a couple of those. And i got to tell Nate when I get back to Charlotte just exactly what went on here today because he always loves a good fight between women. I've seen him cheer many on. 
All right, Denise Storm trying to wear down Reggie Bennett, but Bennett turns it around and now it's up with the hammerlock. I don't think that is what Denise Storm was counting on. I think, you know, while Denise Storm may have reminded me of the nature boy, I think Reggie Bennett puts me more in mind to Chief Wahoo McDaniel right today. Big, strong, with big chop. That's, that's exactly right. All right. So, almost did not get her over. Almost got her right on the head, which I think is maybe what she was trying to do, and Denise managed to tuck just in the nick of time. Boy, oh. Almost lost her elbow. What a knee left there. Brother, I tell you what, the toll is being waged on, on these two girls. I don't know how much longer they can keep up a pace oh, like this. Try to break this out. Reggie Bennett draped across the rope. Denise Storm just sits on her. Hey, D Reggie Bennett's no shrinking violet either. I think I think uh, Eddie Sharkey is just saying, hey, let him fight it out. Let the toughest woman win. Well, so far, it's been a pretty even battle. What do you say? Off the throat. Well, you're telling her now, get it off the throat. You can't choke her. Yeah, you, you can hear Eddie Sharkey trying to be efficient right now. And I think that, that, uh, that well, forearm come is... Come on, Eddie. She's right down across the throat. He, he's checking it. That forearm is right up Eddie's under the Eddie's sitting there saying that. If you don't break that in the next two or three minutes, I'm going to make you break it. Oh, what do you want to get on a poor referee for? He ain't doing nothing to nobody. That's my point. Oh, well, if you comb your hair right, nobody will notice it. Reggie Bennett pulls her over. Now she got her in a uh, scissors. I tell you, this is like two giants coming up against one another. I tell you, neither one has had the upper hand for long, Jim. Well, right now, Reggie Bennett has managed to take hey, hey, hey. Denise Storm over, but Denise trying to get a hand in those tights, and there's just not room. She's by short, right? Huh? Denise and, Storm. And Denise Storm now down, and Reggie Bennett telling the referee, Ch Check my shorts, Rip. I don't think any shark he wants to tackle a job quite that immense. He's not getting paid for something like that. Bend it into the ropes. Drops down. Thought Denise was going to dive at her, but Denise had the move well scouted and instead pulled up short and got a hold of Reggie again, the reverse chin lock once again. I think Reggie Bennett saw in Storm's eyes she was going to make that dive and she tried to get out of the way, but the spirit was willing, but the body just wasn't able. Denise just pounding on the back of Reggie Bennett. Kicking now. She's going to make Bennett mad is what she's going to do. And when she does, we all had better watch out. I don't know. She's trying for a suplex. I don't know. Whoa. Reversal on that one. I just don't think if I were Denise Storm, going on a trying for a suplex on Reggie would be uh, what I would try. Big backdrop by Reggie Bennett. High, high vertical elevation there. She's Bennett. got her in the corner. Takes it now. Denise reverses and throws Bennett into the corner. Bennett. Oh! oh, my goodness. Bennett came out of the corner. Went for a close line and caught Eddie Sharkey. Sharkey has been knocked into tomorrow. In the meantime, Denise Storm from behind goes after, throws Denise Storm now out of the ring. Brother, I'll tell you what, Reggie Bennett trying to pick up Eddie Sharkey and see if he's all right. Well, what's Denise Storm Denise doing? Denise Storm in the meantime has gone after a chair. Denise Storm's got that chair. She's coming in the ring. Reggie Bennett has seen her. What in the world? Bennett. She, oh, she's got Bennett it. She's got the chair. The chair. Away, and now Bennett's going after her. She's got the chair. the chair. What's fair is fair. Turn about is fair play. She's, and look at Denise. No, no, no. No, sister. No, I didn't, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Oh, and now here she goes. Get her, get her. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> she would have taken her head off if she had. Wait a minute, Sharky. No, Sharky, you're not going to. Sharky. She's disqualified. Reggie Bennett's disqualified. I know the ref.
referee can't see everything, but it was obvious to everybody watching here on live TV. Hey, hey. Ray Storm brought the chair into the ring. If, if Reggie Bennett's aim had not been so bad, if Reggie Bennett's aim with that clothesline had not been so bad, then she wouldn't have knocked the referee out, and she would have not been disqualified. All I can Reggie say Reggie Bennett is knocked the referee out. Justice was not served in that match. Reggie Bennett should not have been disqualified. Mick Karsh is standing by. He has another competitor in today's Super Lady Showdown. Justice doesn't get served in every federation. Harley Saito, a big challenge ahead. First, Denise Storm. That's a big mountain. Yes, uh, Eagles are a good match, but me, number one. Ladies and gentlemen, a very, very confident Harley Saito to do battle with Eagle Sawai. Thanks, Mick. Coming on now, we've got Harley Saito and Eagle uh, Sawahi. Yes. Now, they're both 24 years of age. They both have six years of experience. There is, however, a substantial weight difference among the two. How do you think they're going to fare in that? What I saw with Sawai was that she was easy to antagonize, very easy to irritate from the fans, and you can't do that because if the fans can irritate you, your opponent can irritate you. Saito, I saw a lot of cool smoothness in her, and she's smaller, but uh, the, some of those Savat kicks that she threw were just right on the money. I've got to go with Saito on this and one. I'm going to go right along with you, right Nick. I think she's going to come okay. out on top. Let's, Let's go. go. Jim and Joe. We are back in the ring, and our next match is coming up. And, and is, Reggie Bennett, your favorite, is out of the LPWA Japanese tournament. Well, it was <laughs> unjust in my and opinion. And Dangerous Denise Storm, my favorite, is going to the finals. One more match, and she'll be the LPWA Japanese champion, and she will be wrestling the winner of this, the winner match. Of this match, Saito and Sawai. Two of the Japanese ladies facing each other to see who will go into the finals. And here comes Sawai again, and as we said, the fans just absolutely took a disliking to this lady. She says that her toughest opponent in the past has been Lady X over in Japan for a title match. Well, that may change right here. How much is 80 kilos? Oh, about 190 pounds, I think. <laughs> Doesn't she? No, a little oh. bit less than 190 yeah, pounds. Yeah, got to be less than 190. This one should be a barn burner. Harley Saito taking on Eagle Sawai. And the big thing here is this. The winner of this match goes into the finals against Denise Storm. Let's go to the ring announcer for our introduction. This will be our second match in round two for the ladies LPWA championship. Introducing in the corner to my left from Tokyo, Japan, she is Harley Saito. And her opponent, ladies and gentlemen, Eagle Sawaii. Down the ringside for Joe Pedicino and Jim Coronet. Well, Jim, this, well, is, Joe? It. this is the uh, last second round match in the tournament. The winner of this will go on to face Denise Storm. And once again, Harley Saito finds herself in quite a predicament. She is taking on a huge competitor this time in Eagle Sawai. And Eagle Sawai proved to us in the opening round that she is one mean mama. No, mommy was in a tag match. This is not, But I'll tell you something, Harley Saito, she showed these people here in Rochester, Minnesota a thing or two, and she's the smallest Japanese girl, I guess, I believe. Like I said, I don't know kilos. I don't know this metric stuff. But she, I think she's the smallest Japanese girl in the tournament, and she has put up one of the better fights of anybody today. You know who she reminds me a lot of? Who's that, Joe? A lady we're going to be seeing a little bit later on in today's uh, Super Lady Showdown, and that is Malaya Hosaka. She doesn't have the biggest size, but she has the skills and the attitude to make up for it. Well, I think Harley Saito just goes out there on sheer determination against these bigger opponents, and here she comes. Sends Eagle Sawai into the turnbuckles. That leg right in midair in the middle of one of those kicks and just using the power, just took Saito down to the mat face first. And now look how she's got that leg bent. I tell you what, these, these Japanese girls, you can detect a variety of styles in their wrestling. 
You know, there's several different types of styles of pro wrestling in Japan, Joe. There's a, there's a submission style wrestling. There's a American style pro wrestling. There, there's sambo wrestling, which is really a Russian form of submission wrestling. There's quite a number of styles in the one country of Japan. And Mexican wrestling is also very popular there. So yep. these girls incorporate a lot of different techniques into their ring attack. And they each get to, uh, to wrestle opponents and learn of each of those styles. So uh, you can almost see some of these Japanese ladies change some styles as their opponent changes. That's exactly right. They try to prepare for the individuality of their opponent. Yes. Harley Saito, like we said, she is determined to win this LPWA Japanese Championship for her country. She reminds me of Bruce Lee. You know, everybody says, yeah, I'm 250 pounds, I'm 300 pounds, I'm big, I'm tough. Bruce Lee was 145 pounds, used to whip battalions at the time. You, you saw those movies, right? Yes. The point is, like the old saying goes, and I'm sure our good friend Steve Beverly down there in Jackson, Tennessee would attest to this, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. I could not agree more, and right now... I wonder if Steve's watching today. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I spoke with him earlier, and he told me he was going to be uh, watching the showdown. He was really looking forward to seeing this international display of ladies' wrestling talent. Well, there you go. And right now, you can't get much more international than what we've got in the ring. Two of the Japanese superstars... That happens to me a lot when I reach out like that. They Get my hand slapped away. away. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. The referee blocking the view effectively of our camera, so the director who's always on the ball, Tony Bond, he switched to another exciting angle, and now we see Sawai working on the knee. Look at her just stomp in the back of the knee there. Actually, the side of the knee doing the damage. Because if you knock a knee in a, at a direction otherwise than which nature intended it to go, you can do cartilage damage, you can destroy the ligament, either the anterior cruciate ligament or the posterior cruciate ligament. Yes, down in Atlanta, we're very familiar with things like that because of Dominic Wilkins right now. There you see a two count. Maybe you could explain to me one day exactly what happened to Dominique and his tendon and everything. Look at that. I'll try to, Joe. Into the ropes. Might have had a three count right there. I think he just wants to get a lot of money from the Turner organization without working for it like everybody else does. Oh, beautiful move. Beautiful move. And a reversal. And then again they go over. Again. Almost a three count three straight times there. It was just a matter of who was going to get the three count. Could not keep track of who was on top at any given moment. And right into the ring post goes Harley Saito at the hands of Eagle Sawai. We have a up close and personal look coming up after this match. I'm really looking forward to Jim Bobby is going to be talking to Brad Renigans, the trainer here in the LPWA. Maybe she can get to the bottom of where he got that weird name anyway. <laughs> Look at this huge woman. I mean, she is just absolutely trying to destroy Harley Saito on the outside of the ring. And now she goes and she's going to talk the fans. Not a smart thing to do. Well, you've got to hand it to Harley Saito. She looks like she's that character in a Monty Python movie. Cut her legs off and she crawls with her hands. Cut her arms off and she hops on her bloody stumps. Beautiful move by Saito. Oh. Almost a count of three, but not quite. And Harley Saito's got to be wondering, what is it that I have to do to put this girl's shoulders down to the mat? I think we've had more near pinfalls in this match than anyone so far today, Jim. These two women are taking every opportunity to put their opponent's shoulders to the mat. Now switching to a front face lock. Has the, what has she got? She's got something trapped. Yeah, it's the hair that's trapped. So why with the front face lock being forced to relinquish it, uh, point of the knee to the back in the shoulder blade. So why are you looking at the referee, Jim, like, I don't understand what you're saying. Good well, excuse, I, I guess, right? A lot of people have told Sharky that for years. Some of Americans. And look at the arrogant attitude of Sawai now. She had best be careful because I don't think Harley Saito. Oh! I was just going to say, I don't think Harley Saito is out of this by any stretch of the imagination. She missed the dive. So why turned her back and got drop kicked for her trouble, but Harley Saito, not as quick as she was at the beginning of this contest, missed the dive. Oh, and a spin kick. Holy right mackerel. into the chops. And this is the first time today that I have seen Eagle Sawai like she has really been knocked 
senseless. She is down. I don't think she knows right now where she is. I think she's expected to look out in the crowd and see a lot of Japanese faces. When Harley Saito gets a chance to uncork those flying feet, and she's doing pretty well with those forearms now as well. Look how the crowd here in Rochester has got him behind. Shades, Saito. shades of Billy Robinson, another proponent of the forearm. Very well known in this part of the country. And another spin kick. A cover, one, two, and almost again. This is turning into a, are you ready for it? What? Pier six brawl. We had to say that sometime today, didn't we? That's right. Oh, good Brother. Drops the knee. This has got to be it. She bridges out. I don't believe it. That kick would have knocked the boo boost out. And look at Sawai now going after the knee. She's going right after the knee. Is she biting? She's biting the knee. Well, don't worry about it. Biting the foot. Hey, everybody has to have their inoculations before they can come into this country, so don't worry about it. Look and look at Eagle looking at the referee like, why can't I do that? Jill, in all of those different styles that we talked about that the ladies wrestle in Japan, is biting legal in any of them? Yes, it was made popular by the style of wrestling employed by the Chuchki Indians. You know, this is Indian country up here. Well, I don't know, but she is not oh. going to defeat Saito by biting. But she is really going to tear off. And what gets me is Saito's attitude is that she should be allowed to fight. So why? Still working on Harley Saito. She has done the perfect big girl, little girl match. She has kept the little, smaller girl from taking to the air and using her speed. Well, she perfect. injured that knee, and that's exactly what happened. Whoa! She followed her in. She threw her into the corner and then followed her in with an elbow. And now we're... No! Suplex on that huge well and one, two, and I tell you what, we have had more close counts than this one. I think Eddie Sharkey might have could have got a three count on that one. Now what do we have? That's another Enzigiri, that move popularized by Antonio Inoki. She didn't quite get all of it, but she got enough to put Sawai down to her knees and start kicking and stomping her. What what happened? What's what's happened? Wait a minute, the well, now we can't. The time limit. It's a time limit draw. Ladies and gentlemen, I guess. Wait a minute. Commissioner Wally Carbo has something to say. Hang on a minute, Wally. Commissioner Carbo coming to the ring. For the winner of Point, right there. Right here, the winner. Right there. Wally Carbo. Wally Carbo says it was that we had to have a winner. It would be done on point and that he had awarded the match to Harley Saito. Well, now, not that I don't agree with the commissioner, Wally Carbo. It was a time limit draw. There had to be a winner. But how did he keep track of that many points without losing count? Well, I noticed that he was down here at the end of the table, and he was Looking writing notes, notes yeah. and he was keeping score. So evidently, that has been his plan all along, was that if we had a time limit draw, he would, on points, award a winner, and he just did that. Harley Saito will continue in the tournament. And Eagle Sawai missed it by that much. And was about that much ticked off, you might say. Let's go. Right now, we've got someone standing by. I believe we've got Mick Karsh standing by. Uh, and let's go see what he's got to say. Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to the hospitality suite. Bonnie is there, there with Brad. Go. Get it straight. Get it straight. Thank you, gentlemen. With me now in the hospitality suite, Brad Rangans, one of the exclusive trainers for the Super Ladies of the LPWA. Brad, of course, your accolades include being a former Olympian, a two-time Pan American Olympic gold medalist, and, of course, trainer to some of the Super Ladies. What are we taking a look at here on this pay-per-view exclusive? I think what we've seen, Bonnie, is we've seen the best American women wrestlers and the best Japanese mm -hmm. women wrestlers. And the biggest offsetting difference between the styles of, of, the, of the Americans versus Japanese goes back into their heritage. Uh, they're, they're more versed in the martial arts. They're more versed in submission holds. And, and you can get into the, into the kickboxing and, and so forth and so on. But the biggest power they have is submission holds. Three big matches left on this pay-per-view exclusive. Let's talk about two of the stars that we are about to see. You have personally. 
personally trained. Terry Power and Reggie Bennett, let's specifically talk about the LPWA title, Lady X against Terry Power. Well, Lady X has definitely been a thorn in uh, Terry Power's side for quite some time now. And there's, you know, there's the old saying, uh, too much too soon. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people like to say Terry Powers has is, is gotten, uh, is, is moving along too fast for the experience that she's had. I don't believe this. I've been watching her the last four or five months. She's been training harder than I've ever seen before. She's been successful on tours over in Korea. She's been successful on tours over in Tokyo. You think she'll take the title? I'm looking for a big win here. All right. That and a whole lot more right now standing by our analysis from Sue Henning and Nick Bockwinkle. Ladies and gentlemen, my guests at this time with a big title defense today against Bambi and Malaya Hosaka, the Glamour Girls. Oh, Bambi and Malaya, you finally, finally made it into the square circle with the Glamour Girls. So now Leilani's going to tell you exactly what we're going to do with you. Well, Bambi Malaya, you're no big deal. And if you can excuse me, we got business to take care of. Well, ladies and gentlemen, obviously not very concerned, the Glamour Girls. I guess you heard it there. We've got, I guess you say with the Glamour Girls, uh, Judy Martins and Leilani Kai, we've got the older, more experienced going against the younger, not so experienced, only eight years total experience between Bambi and Hosaka. Well, more so than that, there's an awful lot of battles that the Glamour Girls have gone through, and some of those may have been marriages as well as uh, <laughs> hundreds of matches over their career. Uh, on this one, it would be a tremendous upset if I saw that the young guard, so to speak, uh, Hosaka and Bambi were to come out victorious. But I do know this. I've seen Hosaka wrestle before. She's a small, tiny thing, probably the smallest one we're going to see today. And she's just gutsy. And she fights all the time. She's even, I think, got a bad knee, and she still sticks in there. And Bambi the same way. That uh, it could be, They could have an upset. Who could, knows? Could Maybe the place. younger could have that energy that the older just don't have. Right. We'll have to see. Let's go down to Jim and Joe. Well, I agree with Nick Bockwinkle. This one could be an upset. Uh, Bambi and Malaya Osaka have been very successful as a team, Jim. Yeah, but as you see, Bambi into the ring right now with Malaya Osaka. Osaka's bad knee, which we will talk about in just a little bit, could play a big part in the decision in this match. Well, as you know, Bambi is one of my favorites coming from Georgia. She is a Georgia peach. She's held all kind of titles. Yeah, well, if you ask me, she's a little fuzzy today. And look at this now. Here is total arrogance coming to the ring. This is probably the first time that they have ever had two fur coats in Rochester, Minnesota at the same time in the city limits. These people, you can tell that their idea of a big deal going out Saturday night is somebody showing slides on the wall of the garage. They're not used to glamour like the glamour girls, Leilani Kai and Judy Martin, former WWF women's tag champions, many tours in Japan, wrestled all over Canada, New Zealand, Guatemala. They've been everywhere. That's what I hear. Let's go to the ring announcer, Al Darusha, for this championship match on the Super Lady Showdown. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout will be for the Ladies Professional Wrestling Association Tag Team Title. Introducing the team on my right. First, weighing in at 139 pounds from Stone Mountain, Georgia, she is Bambi. And her tag team partner hails from Osaka, Japan. She is Malaya Osaka. Their opponents in the corner to my left. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Glamour Girls. And her tag team partner from Honolulu, Hawaii, she is Leilani Kai. As you said, the Glamour Girls have been WWF champions. They have, uh, they've held just about every title there is in ladies wrestling. They are currently the LPWA ladies tag team champions. But that could come to an end today right here on our pay-per-view Super Ladies Showdown. And in the ring, while the referee was handing the belt out, 
to Alderusha. The Grammar Girls attack Bambi. Oh, oh, Bambi and Osaka ready for that, though. And as you can see now, they have the upper hand. Oh, Osaka with it. Take it to the air. Bambi staying on the ground. This and fire is Bambi in the corner with Judy Martin. The referee now finally getting two of the ladies outside the ring. And in the meantime, Bambi and Osaka have really taken the upper hand on the Glamour Girls. The crowd oh. pulled behind Bambi and Osaka. And they are like a house on fire right now. And Bambi, the big slingshot boomerang on Leilani Kai, sends her down face first. She's going to do it again, sending her back to the other side of the ring. Where Waits in the corner. Well, I thought for a minute Lilani was going to try and tag Malaya. I think she would have found that would have been a mistake. And a slam, can you believe it? Bambi gets her up off the ground and slams her. Cuts the, oh! the experience that Nick Bockwinkle was talking about right there. Well, that'll wipe the smile off of Bambi's face. The sweet little Georgia girl got caught two knees in the gut. Here comes Malaya Hosaka. All right, you were talking about the injured knee of Malaya Hosaka, Jim. She injured her knee about four weeks ago. She has been training. She has been wanting to compete today, but she went to the doctor. The doctor said there was lateral movement, which is the sign of a partial or full ligament tear. She is scheduled. She is scheduled to have an MRI, to have die shot in the knee to see where the damage is. But she is still here today because of the importance of this match. You can see under her left knee pad, there's a trace of wrapping and tape. But I don't know whether that wrapping and that tape and that knee pad will be able to withstand the punishment of the Glamour Girls. Well, you got to know that before this match is over, the Glamour Girls are going to go after that knee. It has not been a big secret that Malaya Hosaka has had a bum knee. Oh. And I can't believe that Judy and Lilani are not going to, in one way or another, attack the knee of Malaya Hosaka. Just Let's just hope that she can withstand it and uh, keep this match competitive. Even if they don't attack the knee because you know she's going to be guarding it, just the fact that the Glamour Girls outweigh her, the stress of fighting bigger opponents can put too much pressure on that knee, especially being clipped from the side or any kind of lateral movement could tear that ligament the rest of the way out. All right, the Glamour Girls in top shape here as they now are double teaming. Malaya Osaka, the referee, having to take Bambi out of the ring. Bambi now, or rather Malaya, fighting back on Judy Martin. Shut up! Oh, get out of the corner. Let's go. Malaya Osaka, like uh, Nick Bockwinkle said, probably the smallest girl we'll see today, but she's explosive, and she knows how to make the moves in all the right places. And there she goes and makes one of those moves to tag in Bambi, and Bambi comes in, and she's not real happy with the way they've been treated. But unfortunately, Judy Martin knows all of those dirty tricks and goes for the eyes. That's twice in a row now she went for the eyes of Bambi. And Bambi oh. takes her to the head, takes her down to the mat. What's fair is fair, says Bambi. A seesaw battle here between the exuberance of youth and Bambi and Hosaka and the experience of the veterans, Kai and Martin, and down to the mat again. Stop action, even the referee's excited. He's hitting that mat like he's trying to bust a hole in it. All right, Bambi now bringing Lilani Kai into the ring. There was a legal tag made, but Bambi thought she would help Lilani get in. Throws her into the rope. Oh, those lines are right there in the throat area. Bambi now taking over on Lilani Kai. Kai fighting back with a uh, blow to the midsection and now a suplex. Hooked her up for that suplex and took her over quick. Count of one, two, and almost three, but not quite. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, the Tag Team Championship of the World on line in this match. The winners of this match will be the ladies' tag team champions of the LPWA, the most prestigious tag team title in ladies wrestling. And now the Glamour Girls, two on one on Bambi. And I tell you what, the Glamour Girls have been champions for an exceptionally long time. Leilani Kai springs Bambi's head over that top cable. They have been champions for a number of months. They don't want to relinquish those titles. They're going to do everything in their power to keep Bambi and Hosaka from capturing that, those belts. 
Judy Martin now down on Bambi. And what's she going to do? Drops a knee right in the face of Bambi. Obvious to me, the Glamour Girls will do anything and everything they have to to go home with those belts again today, Jim. And Bambi's still fighting back. You know, Bambi wrestles more often than almost any girl in the LPWA. She says, I'll wrestle every night if I, if I can because I love it. And she goes out of her way to book matches against a, num a num numerous amount of opponents so that she can get that experience. But in this case, I think she is getting the, all the experience that she can handle. Crowd getting behind him. That's right, and let me tell you, I know Bambi well enough to know nothing gets her fired up more than hearing the crowd behind her. She is truly a wrestling fans wrestler. She is in the for the fans. That's using your head. Well, yeah, but unfortunately, he's using it as a catcher's mitt. Oh, goodness. Milani Kyle, one of the few women in wrestling who can perform that one in hurt. Now, look at Milani. Drives that head into the midsection of Bambi. And Bambi, she's going to have to call her mama back home in Stone Mountain. You know, after every wrestling match she has, she has to call mama back she home. Call home and, and tell her mama how she did. Tell That's her right. that she's okay. Well, in this case, mama's home in Stone Mountain watching on pay-per-view television. What a move. Look at that bridge. Exceptional athletic ability Goes from again. Lilani Kai. Bambi kicks out at the two count one more time. And I can see the tears in Bambi's mother's eyes from here, as well as her little dog, Thumper. Well, I just hope that the tears in her eyes. Referee didn't see the tag. But they the made referee. They made a the tag. referee did not see the tag. They made the tag. There's that reverse kick. Looks like, the, the looks like the referee's going to let it stand. He's going to let it stand even though he didn't see it. Two count now. Malaya comes in and luckily for Malaya, even though the referee did not actually see that uh, tag, we saw it here on our pay-per-view TV. So the referee did let it stand. Maybe, maybe he saw it reflected off his head. Leilani Kai now, Malaya Hosaka. That's her problem. She is a ball of fire when she first comes in. Here it is. Is. She calls that the setting sun suplex. Rising sun. Setting sun. Rising sun. Never mind, it's something to do with the sun. But at this point, the sun is fixing to go out for Malaya Hosaka. The glamour girls are double teaming. The referee is keeping Bambi out of the ring while these two double team. Double kill, buddy. There's Bambi. A big reverse power bomb. I don't know what the heck she calls it, but she drove her down spine first. Malaya Hosaka has been, I think her knee, she came down on her feet also, and I think her knee may have given way. Look at the pain she's in. I think you're right, Jim. I think that, that move affected her knee. Now, Bambi is in the ring. The referee is going to have to throw Bambi out. And while the referee throws Bambi out, what is this move? And there is the power bomb. power bomb. And, and they made the switch. Down. They switched. They made the switch. She's not the legal Ooh. woman. It's over. You're right. She was not the legal woman. The referee, in my opinion, lost complete control of this match. He didn't know where he was or where what was going on. All I know is that, unfortunately for Bambi and Malaya, we do have winners. They are the Glamour Girls. They are still the... LPWA World Tag Team Champions. Not very happy to see that. Not with the way they won it. The wrong woman did the damage and the wrong woman won the match. Unbelievable, unbelievable action from start to finish, Joe. And the yeah, action was so over yet. The action was so fast and furious. The referee lost track of who was legal, who was supposed to be in the ring, who had made the tag. Malia Hosaka, after a beautiful move, was caught with a reverse something by Judy Martin, took her over, then the power bomb, it was all over. All right, let's go to Mick Carr. She's standing by with these words. Denise Storm in the finals for the Japanese championship.
You've already defeated Susan Green and a disqualification win. A win is a win. I beat Reggie Bennett. A win is a win. Thank you. All right. Any plans for Harley Saito in this final bout? I'm not sure what a good old-fashioned American butt-kicking is all about. It's coming up right now. Thanks, Mick. Nick, what do you got to say on this one? Well, Harley Saito, I see as the underdog in this one, but I guess what I, I, I don't know, but I've got a sneaking feeling that underneath it all that she could possibly pull it off. But uh, Denise Storm, she, she has shown in two, two, two matches now that she can do whatever has to be done in order to win a match. Yeah, she does, but I'm gonna go with Saito on this one. She's got six years and just watching her in the past. Yeah, she's, she's got those She's got those smooth moves. Those kicks are just devastating. I don't care how big you are. If you hit the right button, you gotta go down. Let's go down to Joe and Jim. Joe, Joe, I just saw a sight like I've never seen before. Al Jerusha in the ring, getting down and boogieing to the music of Dangerous Denise Storm coming to the ring. Well, as you can see there, Denise Denny Storm. Terrio, he's not. He looks like Merv Griffin, though. Good friend of Denny's, you know. Yeah, I, I bet he wishes he had the money of a Merv Griffin. Yeah, but I bet he don't wish he had his lawsuits. All Dangerous right. Denise in the finals. This match will determine the LPWA Japanese ladies champion, and what a match it will be. You know, I hate to use a cliche, but this one would be a main event in any arena anywhere in the world. Harley Saito taking on dangerous Denise Storm for the Japanese ladies title. Let's go to Al Darusha. He has got the ring introductions in this championship match. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout will determine the LPWA Japanese title. This will be a title bout. Introducing in the corner to my right, from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 163 pounds, she is Denise Storm. And her opponent, weighing in at 124 pounds, she is Harley Saito. Eddie Sharkey, the referee for this championship, bout down to ringside. Well, you know, we heard Nick Bockwinkle's expert analysis of this. What is your opinion, Jim? I've got to be honest with you and tell you, I don't see how Harley Saito, with a bum knee, is going to be able to take on Denise Storm. It'll be a competitive match, but I've got to tell you, I think Denise Storm has got everything going her way in this one. I see Saito favoring that knee. Bad knees yeah. are a pretty common occurrence among the ladies of the LPWA these days. But like you said, Denise Storm is too big and too powerful. Under normal circumstances, I would say Harley Saito could come up with a victory with a surprise move, using that speed and the flying moves that she has. But without all of her speed and agility, there's no way she's going to take Dangerous Denise down, and that's a fact. Well, as you can see, Denise Storm is starting off the match in a very powerful position. I think it's Japanese for... Uh, 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 uh. Wait a minute, Saito switches out. You know, she is a better technical wrestler than Storm. Most of the Japanese girls, that's their strong point, technical wrestling. So you, you'll find that quite a bit. All right, now, earlier in today's pay-per-view, you made a comment about the fans here in Rochester booing the Japanese ladies. Would you not agree that as they have learned throughout the day about Harley, they are very much behind Harley Saito right now? There was a chant in this audience a minute ago, Harley, Harley. I mean, I think that shows a lot of intelligence on the part of the fans here in Rochester. That just means it took them about two hours to smarten up to what I knew at the beginning, which means they're about two hours behind me. Yeah, you're right. Denise, somehow or another, it's not even good when I'm right with you, you know what? It don't feel good when I'm right. Harley Saito in bad shape now. Denise Storm working on the elbow and the shoulder. And Denise Storm literally knows that she is one victory away from her first major title here in the LPWA, the newly crowned Japanese ladies champion. And Jim, with all of the popularity of Japanese ladies wrestling over in Japan, it is just as popular as the men's wrestling. Uh, you know, it's gotta be quite a feather in anyone's cap to be the Japanese ladies champion. 
Yeah, and also I've got the point. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's a that's a judo submission maneuver. If uh, wait a minute, Dangerous Denise has her right arm clasped around her left wrist. Now she does it. If if Saito had maneuvered her down in just the proper position, that would have been a submission maneuver. Dangerous Denise Storm, Harley Saito. It's got to be a feather in both girls' caps to have wrestled three times in one day and won twice. Whoever the loser of this match is has still uh, really accomplished a great deal. Three matches, two wins, and a heck of a fight and a loss. I agree. And don't forget, fans, we have one more match coming up after this here on the Super Lady Showdown. We will be taking a look at Terry Power finally getting her opportunity against Lady X. She is going to get a chance to take the world title from Lady X. And I think that that is going to be the match of, not even today, but the match of the year in ladies wrestling. After all this time, Terry Power has never had a title match until today. Harley Saito with those kicks. She can't get the height that she was getting. Snap suplex under the storm. If Harley Saito can't get those kicks up into the face, she's going to be in trouble. That's a drop kick. And again, a little low. You'll notice she's not making it all the way. Oh, there she got her. Right in the face with a spin kick. A two count. Eddie Sharkey got a two count that time. And let's give some credit here now to Harley Saito. She is faring better than I expected her to. I do think she's still favoring that knee, but she has got Denise Storm going. Now, Denise Storm has the hair. We had to know that Denise Storm sooner or later was going to resort to some dirty tricks in this match. Saito hits the ropes. Oh, goes for a reverse blind crucifix. She's got her down. Two count. And Denise Storm was not expecting that. Once again, I think that is going to be Saito's only chance is to do the unexpected. Oh, look at that spin Just kick. like that, right in the face, a boot to the face. I did not expect Harley Saito to have the mobility remaining with that bad knee to throw this many kicks at Denise Storm. She has taken the fight out of Denise. Something se severe since the start of the match. Saito now in trouble as Denise Storm Looks like, yes, she goes for the snap suplex, which snaps the neck and then slams him down to the mat. A two count on that, and let's give it to Saito. She was able to kick out of that, Jim. Denise Storm front face lock and maybe a little low on the throat. Maybe. Yeah. Now, see Eddie Sharkey getting down there under the action to check it out. Take a look at this one now, Sharky. That's good, that's good. It's right on the point of the chin. And now a modified surfboard. Now, you sure this is the modified? This is a modified surfboard because the point of the knee is in between the shoulder blades. No, she's not giving up, says Saito. Something tells me they would have to break her arms to get her to give up in this match. Most important match probably of Harley Sado's career. Look at the determination on the face of dangerous Denise Storm as she applies the modified reverse chin lock. Look at the power. Look at the determination to win the LPWA Japanese titles. You can hear it. I watch the choke, keep it off the choke. Referee telling Denise to watch the choke. Move it up off the throat. Boy, you gotta commend our audio Listen crew to today. The they the have crowd. been right in the ring with the wrestlers all day today. The crowd now trying to get behind Harley Saito. Look at that move. Beautiful waist lock back into a back suplex. And Denise Storm hit right on the head. That's the end of Gary, but once again, she was not able to get the height to get the force that she would like, but she got up there. Now going for another back suplex. I cannot believe that Harley Sato has been able to use these moves on someone the size of Denise Storm. And Denise Storm's back is injured. Oh, big shot. Denise Storm's back is hurt. And Saito may have done the very thing she needed to do in injuring a part of Denise Storm. There is a knee. There is another kick. There's another kick. Two straight kicks. She's down one, two, but Denise Storm able to kick out of that one. Saito had better, if she is going to be able to win this match, she had better do something right now. Denise Storm taking a breather out on the uh, outskirts of the ring, trying to stop that momentum somewhat, reverse the 
reverse the procedure and reverse the advantage, and she does. Picks up Harley Sides and easily slams her to the mat. Jim, now is the time, and this is the place for both of these women. They're worn down. They've been through an entire tournament. This is their third match. One of these two women are going to have to come on strong and bring up some of that intestinal fortitude from way down deep and pull this match out. Denise Storm so far today has knocked down. Wait a minute, count of one, two. F. She got the foot on the rope. Denise broke the count. She has knocked out Susan Green. With a chain. She has emerged victorious by, over Reggie Bennett. By a DQ. And now, wait a minute, Harley Sage all over by it. She's moved. Back bridge. She's going down. Two. pinning combination I have ever seen has just defeated Denise Storm to become the first ever LPWA ladies Japanese champion and she did it Jim I cannot believe it Joe and she now, went Denise Storm went to give her a back suplex Saito flipped over landed on her feet brought her feet up under Denise Storm's arms fell backwards rolled up in a back bridge and that was it and Harley Saito is now being presented with the beautiful trophy representing the Japanese ladies champion of the LPWA. And there you see it. Beautiful cut being presented to Harley Saito as she is the new ladies LPWA Japanese champion. And I am sure that she will defend that title well in Japan. But you better be careful. That loving cup comes out of that. It's a very unique trophy. It would hate to have anything happen right here to her on TV. Every, every, nothing else has knocked her out today. Yeah. Maybe that could. If, well, I, if I know Wally Carbo, he's got the real silver at home and gave her the gimmick one. All right. It is time now to go to Bonnie Blackstone in the hospitality suite. She is standing by, and she has this profile with one of the combatants in our next match. In the hospitality suite with you once again, we have come down to the finale of this great Super Lady Showdown. As Lady X is about to step in the ring against her greatest challenge ever, this lady to my left, Terry Power. Terry, you have been training hot and hard. How do you feel about going into this one? Mm, I feel stronger than ever. Uh, there's been a big difference in my training, and the training has been through my frame of mind and using the power of positive thinking my training has had more passion in it now more than ever uh i believe that this this match that i've been given is a gift and i'm not going to waste it well you've been ranked number one for quite a while let's talk about some of your training though it's taken you uh, on a world tour it also has encompassed wrestling in japan some of the greatest ladies japan wrestlers um what have you learned there in your international travels well the, going to japan has been uh, the next best uh thing to being in in Brad Rangan's uh, you know under his supervision right uh, all the things that Brad instilled uh, in us the the self-discipline the the aggression the technique mm -hmm. uh, the respect for this the the sport um, the the Japanese people they have this they respect they that as this. well yeah yes. oh. let's talk about the power of positive thinking what's your last minute comments mm. the power of positive thinking is with me and I know anything that you can see up here, you'll attain it. I'll she's a visionary, it. and she's probably going to be the next LPWA Ladies Champion. Let's go now to Nick Mockwinkle and Sue Henning. Terry Power taking on Lady Axe. She looks very determined. She looks very much like she's in shape. Uh, Nick, does she work hard? I mean... I saw this girl about a year and a half ago, and I, at that time, I commented to my cohorts uh, the intensity that I think you sense when you see her there. Uh, the other thing is, we don't know about Lady X. That's what Lady X wants it to be. She, we know her weight, we know her age, and she's got 10 years of experience against Terry Powers, two years. But I will say this much for Powers. Powers, when you talk to her, has a determination, a feeling, and a fervor uh, that if she wants this, she wants it bad, she can taste it. Lady X is gonna have to have that same fervor and power if she wants to attain it, keep it. And she's gonna need that to get it, too. Absolutely. Let's go down to Jim and Joe. Terry Power. Terry Power voted Rookie of the Year. And Jim, this is her opportunity. This is the one she's been waiting for. She gets a shot at the LPWA Ladies World Title right here on the Super Lady Showdown. This is the main event.
I tell you what, Terry Power has been waiting for this for a long time. She has never before had a match for the LPWA Heavyweight Singles Championship. Lady X, the champion, coming to the ring, defeated Susan Sexton almost one year ago. Never removes her mask, never talks. She's a woman of mystery. And I say Terry Power is going to go out to close this one quick. Well, I agree with you. This one I don't think is is going to be able to, to drag on and on. Let's go to the match and let's go to Al Darusha. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout will be for the LPWA World Title. Introducing in the corner to my left, she is from Parts Unknown, know nothing about her. She is the current reigning champion of the LPWA Lady X. And the challenger hails from Portland, Oregon, weighing in at 155 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry Power. You can see Joe Terry Power, she has been training. She's been working out. She's in the best shape of her career. And she is ready to take on Lady X, but Lady X has been a tremendous, tremendous competitor. Almost one year as the LPWA Women's Champion, no one else has ever held the title that long. That's right. And I think that is a testament to the ability that Lady X has brought to the belt. Terry Power, look at the steel in her eyes, brother. She's ready for this one. Well, as we said, this is what she has been waiting for, the opportunity to take home all of the gold and right now she's got it she's got lady x and it will be a pretty even steven match one on one no managers at ringside no seconds at ringside the lady who has the day will take home the pay today well, lady x is starting early i thought terry power would be the one to make the fast break because she's got something that she wants to get right of the power Very fast, as we said she was going to need to. Power wants to prove something. All the experts have said Terry Power is the future of women's wrestling. She has never been able to corner the champion, never gotten a title match, and everyone's always said, oh, if Terry Power had a title match, she'd win the belt. If Terry Power doesn't win the belt today, then she's going to have egg on her face, and so are a lot of experts. That's why she's got to prove herself. Well, you're right. She said that all she needed was a chance, all she needed was an opportunity, and she has it here today on our pay-per-view exclusive, the Super Lady Showdown. And this is the showdown right here. Take a look at that. Take a look at what she is doing. She is literally ripping the hands of Lady X apart. She spread the fingers. Now sends Lady X reeling back to the ropes. Right, let's go. Get her off the ropes. Big forearms across the chest. Terry Power is just. Here comes the big clothesline. Wait a minute. She's over the top rope. Boy, I tell you, Lady X, I don't believe she thought that Terry Power was going to be this ready for this contest. And the referee telling Power, you got to let your opponent get in the ring. And Power decides to bring her in, but catches a knee instead. And Lady X now rakes the hair and the eyes across that rope in the throat. And now Lady X goes in. This is her opportunity to take over on the big power. And Jim, it's no secret how I feel about Terry Power. Let's go. I think she is the future of professional wrestling. Look at that. Fingers in the eyes. That's an old Bobby Eaton tactic. I love it. Well, and Terry Power, probably the only weak spot she's going to have is those eyes, or the only vulnerable spot. There's not another spot on her body, if you ask me, where she is going to be able, not be able to take a lot of pain, but nobody can take it in the eyes. Oh, look at that. Dropped right down, brought her head with force up under Lady X's face. Now picks her up for a big slam. Power exerting that power. Comes down with a huge elbow. One, two. Got a two. 
Got a two count, says the referee. Terry Power wants to add this LPWA title to her resume. She already has a successful gym business. She flies her own airplane. She's had parts in different motion pictures. She's done it all except hold the LPWA. Oh, 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 flying crossbody gets another two count. Lady X one second away from losing the most coveted title in all of ladies professional wrestling, the LPWA Ladies World Title. Reversal into the ropes with a bear hug and dropped her right across the top rope, face first, spun her across the rope. And now where is X going? X is taking her outside and what is she gonna do? Well, between that and being slammed into these metal railings twice now, Powers is not in the best of shape. She needs to get back into the ring. Luckily for Powers, the count has been stopped as the referee is getting Lady X back into the ring. Come on, up, let's Terry go. Power One, almost, two, almost was out for the count at that point. She took several tremendous blows and now having a hard time getting back into the ring. Lady X not letting Terry Powers back into the ring. But she needs to remember now, Terry must be in the ring if Terry is going to win the belt. Lady X can hold on to that belt by getting disqualified or if Terry Powers gets counted out. So this is definitely a situation where Powers has everything to lose and everything to gain. On the other hand, Lady X can win it and keep the belt whether she wins or not. Terry Powers in a situation just like an attorney in a court of law. The burden of proof is on her. She's got to win by pin or submission. That's the only way she can come out on top of this. Our referee asking Terry if she's ready to give up. Terry says no. The main event okay. of the Super Let's Ladies turn. Showdown. We hope you've enjoyed this great pay-per-view event today. Some of the most exciting ladies wrestling I have ever seen has taken place right here on your home television. We want to thank you for allowing us to come into your homes today. Be watching for more from the LPWA in the future. Standing drop kick from Terry Power. Lady X bailing out. She's coming over here. Maybe she's going over hey, there. Hey, 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 hey. Watch Al DeRouche's hands. Watch Al DeRouche's hands. Lady X has a glass. Hey, hey, come on, Al tried to put his hand in an inappropriate place on oh, Lady X. Lady X has just hit Terry Power with a glass. He took the glass off the table. Hit her in the back of the head with it. And threw that glass down, and I hear glass. I heard glass break everywhere. It's all over the place. Get up and get the hell out of her. Broken glass all over the floor. These ladies have better be very careful out there now. This would not be a good time to have something happen with all that broken glass outside. Let's keep it in the ring. Terry Power gets back in the ring and Lady X goes right after him. Lady X really clocked Terry Power with that breaking glass. Got out of the way. Move for the top of the clothesline. Big chop now from Terry Power. And Terry Power is chopping the daylights out of Lady X. Just tosses Lady X over. There's another flying drop kick. Powerful drop kicks from those legs. There's another one. Terry Power is just barn burning this thing. She has got Lady X short clothesline. Stuns her. She's down one, two, and just barely gets a shoulder up. Once again, Lady X literally a second away from losing that cherished LPWA title. And now Power picks her up. Sends her into the ropes. Comes Hit off. Power the There's power the, slam. And she has the power slam. One, two. No, roll, roll. Put on the ropes. Oh, that was a I, don't know if he had it. I thought that was it. But that Lady was... X got her foot out on the rope. There was a foot on the rope, but it broke the count. That's this. That's this. And now, Terry Power. Small pockets by Lady X. Yeah. Two. Lady X comes back with what looked like a possible situation there where she could keep the title and a shoulder block into Terry Power. Another shoulder block, knocks Power down and this time Lady X goes for the count, one, two. But again, Terry Power able to kick out at the two. last second. Shoulder came up. Come on, break it up, X. A jump call. Two, three, stay off the throat. One, two, stay off the throat, X. Uh. 
or referee Bruce Kreitzman. He looks more like Johnny Red Shoes Dugan in that, uh, in that outfit he's got on. Shoulder lock again by Lady X. Lady X counting on her bump to do the job here. She's now going up. She's up on the second row. What's she doing? She's loading the mask. She put something in that mask. You see it right there. She's going to come up with a headbutt. Oh, and she got Terry Power. Terry was able to move. on the shoulder, on the shoulder, not in the head like she wanted. Terry Power now going outside. Where is she? She's going to head up to the top. She's going to be careful. That mask is still loaded.